ESPN welcomes you to the following presentation of the National Football League. We are at the Vet in Philly, where a good crowd uh, late arriving because of the weather. Conditions deteriorating a little bit here. It's uh, been nasty all day and now getting chilly. In the mid-50s with a 14-mile-an-hour wind out of the north, and we are expecting to get showers throughout the rest of the night. Philadelphia tonight will be playing for a share of first place in the NFC East. There is Dallas. They're playing for their first win. And Dave Campo, very heartened by the fact that even though they have lost early in the year, his team has played very, very hard, and that's what he's, he promised us. When you look at the first two football games against San Diego and Tampa Bay, when you watch them on film, the one thing that does jump out, Mike, is that they hustle for 60 minutes, and that is really a difference in this year's football team from the team he had last year. And just remember, this is really a real young football team, and he knows that they have to be really patient with him. Andy Reid now in his third season. A win tonight gets him over the 500 mark as the head coach of the Philadelphia Eagles. And Andy Reid feels he has a contender with this ball club. And a lot of people agree with him. This is a uh, very young, very fast unit with a brilliant young quarterback. Yeah, that's what Joe talked about earlier. When you have a quarterback like a Donovan McNabb, Ooh. it makes a lot of other things easy. One of the great kick returners of all time is back to take the opening kickoff. Brian Mitchell, 11 kick returns for touchdowns in his career. Eight on punch, three on kickoff returns. Brilliant for the Redskins, has continued his career here. And Micah Moore will kick it off for the Dallas Cowboys. And the wind knocked the ball off the tee, and we'll have to reset it. Well, not only do, we, do you look at the breezes that are blowing down on the field and they're swirling, but this turf is not the newest turf out there. And I would look for field conditions and slipping of players to be a very big part of this game tonight. The turf was so bad at one point before they replaced it, they had to cancel one of the preseason games here. It was an ugly scene at the vet that night. Well, the ball fell down again. Well, you see, you only get two. Have to have you only get two. You, you know, you get a mulligan, and then you get another <laughs> mulligan. And now it's not like me. I can't hit the third. <laughs> now somebody's got to hold on to it. And Darren Woodson, who has done just about everything else in his brilliant career, draws the short straw. Well, Actually, he is the safety. He's the safety. Yeah, he is the safety normally on the kickoff team, and a very good one. In fact, last week he made it. He made two tackles as the safety on the kickoff team. Now, don't move, Derek. Don't move, okay? Don't breathe. Don't move. Mike and Orr to kick to Brian Mitchell. Mitchell from the three. Lost the football. Dallas has it on the kickoff. Lynn Scott knocked it loose. Lynn Scott gets the recovery. Weather conditions, weather conditions. The ball is slick. Brian Mitchell coming up, tries to cover up, and just really bumps one of his own men. The ball comes flying out. It's Troy Hambrick who got the hit. Scott got the recovery. Joe Avizano, the special teams coach of the Cowboys, has got his unit fired up and getting the Cowboys their first break of the game. Anthony Wright, the young quarterback. Emmett Smith, the deep man in the eye. And Emmett on the toss. Nowhere to go. Mike Caldwell ran him out of bounds. Offensively, the Dallas Cowboys have got to rely on three people tonight. Emmett Smith is going to have to touch the ball 25-plus times. Anthony Wright will have to handle pressure, not just the blitzing pressure of the Philadelphia Eagles, but when he gets an opportunity to get the ball down the field to Joey Galloway, he's going to have to get it done. Joey Galloway averaging 6.4 yards of reception, and with Rocket Ishmael out, he's going to have to be the guy in the passing game. 
Galloway, McGarity, and Swinton are the wide receivers. Draw to Emmett. Nothing there. Falls inside the 25 to about the 24. You know, on defense, we take a look at Philadelphia. Jeremy Trotter, when Jeremiah Trotter, when you look at him and it says Emmett Smith, yeah, all the linebackers are going to be cognizant of the fact that Emmett is going to carry the ball all the time. He's already carried it twice, not all the time, but most of the time. But Brian Dawkins is a defensive safety, and what he is going to do, he's going to try to tell the offense what he wants them to do. If he stays back, he wants them to run. If he moves up into a running position, he wants them to throw. Michael Wiley is in as the third down back, the second year man out of Ohio State. He has good hands. And now, Anthony Wright has to burn a timeout a minute and 20 seconds into the game. Nothing, nothing from Philadelphia. Can the Cowboys take advantage? know how you feel and that's why we're here circuit city we're with you hey nice car what is it oh it's my new kia optima i got it at kia september clearance event should have got a toyota camry i got leather seats me too v6 engine with sportmatic transmission five year warranty oh no ha ten year and i got two thousand cash back which means i paid seven grand less than you Get amazing deals on 2001 models during Kia September clearance event. Hurry, event ends October 1st. Dual front seat mounted side airbags. Got it. When I told my agent I was playing fantasy sports, he got the wrong idea. I like it. Enjoy the show. <laughs> My fantasy league, unlike sports, is just good fun. I get the latest scores, player stats, even breaking news. Whatever you're into, dig into it deeper, unlike us. It's opening day on ESPN Wednesday Night Hockey. A Stanley Cup champion avalanche led by league MVP Joe Sackett. Take on Super Mario and the Penguins. Score by Lemieux! Colorado Pittsburgh, Wednesday at 8, only on ESPN. Nothing, nothing, first quarter after two running plays lost him four yards. Young Anthony Wright finds himself in a third and 14 hole against the Chargers a week ago. Not bad. A decent quarterback rating of 74-3. Playing for the injured Quincy Carter tonight, who has the bad thumb. Wright fakes the screen one way, goes the other way, and has it batted down in his face. And Caldwell and Brian Dawkins both came roaring through. Well, they put a man in motion, and Brian Dawkins read it. He slides to the inside. He comes off the corner, and Brian Dawkins, nobody blocks him. Look at number 20 on the left-hand side of the screen. Dawkins, they're there. They go up. Caldwell is the guy that actually knocks the ball down. But that was just an outstanding play. That's the kind of pressure that Anthony Wright is going to see all night. He's going to have to find the laces and get rid of the football in a hurry. And now Tim Cedar will come in to try a 42-yard field goal attempt, but they're going to whistle this dead before it starts. You know, Joe, one of the things with a young quarterback is, you know, you get a turnover in the first part of the game. The first thing that you do, if you are a veteran quarterback, and you should as a young quarterback, is do what? Throw the ball. Try I, to score quickly. I agree with you, except against this Philadelphia Eagle defense here. It's loud. You've got youth outside of you. You don't have your two veteran receivers. And I think you really have to try and protect it. If you can get a three-point lead in these weather conditions, maybe it'll hold up. And really, right now, I look at the strength of this Dallas Cowboy football team. I think their defense is what's going to have to keep them in the game. You know, I was half right, though, when I said that. <laughs> yes, you I, were. I, 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 well, the part you got right, they ran the first two times and lost four it. yards. So a pass might have been their best play. Thanks, Michael. I want to thank you very much. I agree with you. How's this? I agree with you, Paul. <laughs> Cedar for a 42-yard field goal. Just 
sneaks it past the post. And Dallas does take advantage of the turnover. It's one of the best of all time. Brian Mitchell coughed it up on the opening kickoff. Brought to you by Campbell's Chunky Soup that eats like a meal. By Circuit City. Circuit City, we're with you. By Kia Motors, makers of a full line of quality cars backed by an incredible warranty. And by Lycos, whatever you're into, dig into it deeper with Lycos. City Hall in Center City, Philadelphia. Brian Mitchell, and if you've watched him throughout his career, you know if he does make a mistake, he is really out to atone for it the next time. Mitchell this time driven a yard deep. And taken down as he crosses the 20 to the 22. Offensively, the Philadelphia Eagles have to rely on Donovan McNabb for high percentage passes. The Cowboys don't want to let him outside. Carell Buckhalter, he has to run effectively. He's filling in for Deuce Staley, who had a heck of a first game against the Cowboys a year ago. And look for Chad Lewis, their tight end, to be a part of this game big. The wide receivers have contributed a lot in the first two games. It seems like it's got to be the tight end's turn in this one. Donovan McNabb, who made the Pro Bowl a year ago, the only negative so far this season. He's been sacked 10 times for a quarterback rating approaching 100. And it's the fullback, Cecil Martin, who gets only his second carry of the year. And when you talk about the Cowboys on defense, Dexter Coakley, when we say he's going to mirror McNabb, he's going to be in coverage, but he's one of the quicker, faster linebackers. So McNabb, he's not going to let him run with the football. Darren Woodson is a very smart safety. He's another guy that's going to dictate to the offense what he would like them to do. If he's back again, who wants him to run the ball? If he comes up to the line of scrimmage, he'd like to see him pass. Second and six draw to Buckhalter, and he reaches the 30. The first down line is at the 32. Buckhalter, one of those <laughs> Nebraska eye backs. We had a lot of fun with him the other day. He split time there, still averaged uh, 6.1 and gained more than 2,500 yards. Said he didn't block, didn't catch passes, but uh, he knew how. <laughs> he just never had to teach. <laughs> it's a funny guy. He said they were practice blocking. They were practice blocking, but we never blocked in the game. He said, how about receiving? He said, well, we never practiced receiving. So they never threw the ball in the game. Third and two. McNabb. Incomplete in and out of the arms of James Thrash. George T coming up and making the hit. Thrash trying to work across the middle. Dallas on defense doing exactly what they want to do. Get pressure on Donovan McNabb. The way you have to attack this defense is up the middle. That's Greg Ellis coming. And then coming around the outside is Brandon Noble. Sean Landetta, who was the NFC Special Teams Player of the Week last week after a brilliant performance, kicking to McGarrity. McGarrity from the 24 shoved out of bounds after a nice return. Punt of 45, the return was 16. Wednesday night at Eastern, the NHL opens its season on ESPN. Mario Lemieux and the Penguins host last year's Stanley Cup champion Colorado Avalanche. Wednesday night hockey on ESPN. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Great to have hockey back. Oh, man. I know you missed it. Hey, I can't. You know, I love that. Hey. Game. That guy, there's a guy who plays on every single team. Guy named he shoots him. What, is, what does he do? Scores. Dallas takes over at the 41-yard line, leading the Eagles 3-0. Play action by Wright, plenty of time, can't find anyone, and throws wide of Emmett Smith, his safety valve. The veteran unit on this ball club is the Cowboy offensive line, and they average 315 pounds. Flozell Adams, the six-time Pro Bowler, Larry Allen, Mark Stepnoski, the smallest offensive lineman in the league at 265, and there's Garmin and Solomon Page, the big right tackle. That's one of the reasons they want to run the football, that and Emmett Smith. 
Well, that's one of the reasons why they have a young quarterback, too, because they have an experienced offensive line. Amadou lost four yards his first two carries. We'll lose a couple more. Flag down. Troy Vincent and Damon Moore up from the secondary in a heartbeat. What you saw on that play is the way the Philadelphia Eagles want to design this defense. What they're looking for is for everything to be spilled outside to the safeties and the corners and the linebackers. That time, Troy Vincent came up in the force and made the hit. Ron Winter, the referee. Holding. 44. Offense. Penalties declined. Brings up third down. It's Robert Thomas, the fullback. Boy, I'll tell you, Troy Vincent, it, it just shows you when you see corners that far in the backfield, and I know it's a running play, they're reading keys, but they just don't respect at all the passing game. Dallas has run five plays. They have lost seven yards, and yet they lead it 3-0. Wiley is in as the third down, back on third and 13. Anthony Wright goes to the shotgun. He may not get this play off. Barely. Pressure. He dumps it out of the backfield, and he's got his tight end, Mike Lucky, and Lucky may be a yard as Jeremiah Trotter, the middle linebacker, got over there to make the stop. Well, I, you just love to watch a defense. What they do is it's third and long, and they'll give you the short stuff, and you've got a young guy that's going to try to take the short stuff, but that's about all you're going to get. After two games, this defense, number six overall in the NFL, there's Mike Anor to kick to Mitchell. On the young season, Mitchell averaging a little over 11 yards a return. Wobbly kick. Mitchell can't get up there, but takes it on the bounce at the 17. Lost the ball again. Brian Mitchell has fumbled a kickoff and a punt to set Dallas up beautifully twice in the first quarter. Dexter Coakley appeared to be the guy downfield to knock it loose. Holy cow. He does a good job not trying to field it. Now he gets it cleanly and just tries to take it up inside and even tries to cover up. But you see the Cowboys do such a great job of hawking. Watch him get pulled. Coakley just yanks it away from him, rips it out of his hands, and then they pounce on it. Tough night so far for Brian Mitchell. The Cowboys have been unable to get out of their own backfield on offense, and yet they have a chance to extend a 3-0 lead. Play action. Emmett opening the flat. They got it to him, but late. Carlos Emmons, the former Steeler, was right there. Oh. <laughs> Flows L. Adams come in at the end of this thing. Yeah. <laughs> He's going to protect his guy. I love it when an offensive lineman does that. Well, Flows L. Adams, or Hotel Adams, as, as they call him, as big as he is, he's just is not going to allow someone to wrestle Emmett Smith to the ground. Adams a fixture at the left tackle. Second and six. Emmett on the toss behind Thomas. Nice cut by Emmett Smith inside the 15-yard line before he goes out of bounds. Larry Allen leading the way, pulling left guard. On that play right there, they just what they tried to do is Paul pull Mark Stepnoski, number 53, to center, but they never let, let him get out. A week ago, he passed Barry Sanders for number two all time, and now only the legendary Walter Payton is in front of him. Coming into the game, he needed 1,435 yards to capture the all-time mark. Third and three, Anthony Wright trying to keep the drive going. Blitz coming, and around to McGarrity. McGarrity got a nice block and out of bounds with a first down near the five-yard line. This is no play, Michael. The flag went down. That's the best offensive play they've had tonight, and they're bringing it back. 
Well, I'll tell you what, though. Prior to the snap, false start, 86 offense. Five-yard penalty. Remains third down. It's a tight end, Mike Lucky. When you're only six minutes into a ball game and you're going to gadget plays like reverses and stuff, you got some problems. Well, but when you have a defense that's as aggressive as the Philadelphia Eagles, if you can break it, you can, it's a chance worth taking, I think, because they haven't been able to do anything else. Now it's third and eight. Here they come again. Oh, they're all up on the line of scrimmage. Everybody comes in. Anthony Wright never had a chance. Dawkins was coming. Trotter was coming. Well, you know, everybody but Andy Reid was coming. We saw Brian Dawkins come from the outside. Where do you think Brian Dawkins comes this time? Right straight up the middle. Take a look in the middle of the field. Here comes Brian Dawkins. And they almost get a shot at him, but they can't make the play. Wiley is the, is the backfield guy, number 32. He can't even slow him down. The only question was who would get there first. Well, you got to figure Brian Dawkins is going to do it because he's the guy that's closest to him right up the middle. Got a 42-yard field goal. Now we'll drive from 43, and Cedar is good again. So two turnovers, and the Eagles defense has turned back the Dallas offense and forced them to go to the kicking game. That's your new Kia Sophia? <laughs> Back at the vet in Philadelphia, 6-0 Cowboys. Brian Mitchell has fumbled twice on a kickoff return and a punt return. Dallas has had scoring drives of minus four and minus five, and they lead 6-0. <laughs> because Philadelphia hasn't been able to generate any offense either. A little credit to Dallas's defense. I can honestly say I have never seen that. He gets it this time from the nine. Let's go to Susie Culver. Susie? Mike, the Cowboys came prepared. More than 200 pairs of shoes, two kinds of turf, two kinds of grass. This is the kind that's for the wet turf out here. This is what all the linemen are wearing. But the corners, the wideouts, Emmett Smith, are still wearing the grass type of shoes, and they haven't made a change yet. But these guys talked to the Jets, who played here when it rained. They said it was so slick, it didn't matter what kind of shoes they wear. They were slipping and sliding. But so far, nobody on the Cowboys side has changed shoes. All right, Susie, they just want to get across the line of scrimmage. They wear slippers if they could do it. Susie can put both feet in one shoe. McNabb back to throw. Dumps it off and nearly threw the interception. Holy cow, Greg Ellis had it hit him in the chest. That thing shocked Greg Ellis. Oh. <laughs> Donovan McNabb being contained in the pocket. Watch this. He drops back, stays in the pocket, looking, looking for a crossing route. There you see Buck Halter go out, and Greg Ellis can't believe it. He threw it too low to him. You, know, you can't throw it low to tall guys, whether they're defensive linemen or white. There's this whistle, and here it comes. Buck Halter this time, he's drilled as he got to the 40-yard line. Pepe Zellner led the charge for Dallas defensively. The one thing Dallas has been unable to do this year, even though they have played hard on defense, is get anybody off the field on third down. Teams have been able to convert 50% of third downs against them this year. Tampa and San Diego both converting a lot of them. Third and 18, or 18-1 uh, uh, games, 14 in another game. Nay Brown is in as a third wide receiver on third and seven. All day for McNabb. Still can't find anybody. And then throw sideline threat. Oh, great protection. No, no, you know, it was Mike, but the Dallas Cowboy defensive linemen were bound and determined not to allow him out. So what he did was he bought himself time. Great poise and patience in the pocket. He wants to run, but now he says, all right, no, they won't let me go. I'll make the throw. Nice job by Thrash, continuing to work for his quarterback. Never quitting, never stopping, and knowing where you are on the field. Thrash had 10 a week to go for 165 yards, his biggest day as a pro. And Donovan McNabb against the Cowboys. Not good numbers, two touchdowns and five picks in his young career. McNabb again, just sitting back in the pocket. Throws complete. 
Down to the 21-yard line, Todd Pinkston. Boy, when you run play action with a guy like McNabb, and they're only basically rushing three guys on, on Dallas's defense, they just froze the defensive line, and McNabb had all day to throw the ball. There wasn't anyone even close to him. That's what I'm talking about. Watch the offensive line. Here they come. Excuse me, there were four guys rushing, but the play actually just holds them at the line of scrimmage. The offensive line doing a tremendous job, and then he finds the wide open receiver. First down, Eagles down by six. Blitz coming. And the fullback, Cecil Martin, got absolutely nothing on that one. For years, the Eagles had trouble on the offensive line, but you saw how well they're pass blocking now. An average of 322 pounds, Trey Thomas. Brzezinski is in there for the injured John Wellborn. Hank Fraley is in for Bubba Miller, who is out with a broken ankle. Jermaine Mayberry and the huge John Runyon at right tackle, who got a $30 million deal to come here as a free agent. Plus, he's nasty. Second and nine. Blitz coming. McNabb still with time. Throws. And caught at the 13-yard line. And that's the Pro Bowl tight end, Chad Lewis. Chad Lewis is such a vital part of this offense. Had eight catches coming into this game. 69 last year. But he's the guy down in the red area that makes the West Coast offense work. Think of a guy like Brent Jones out in San Francisco. Keith, ja Keith Jackson up in Green Bay. This is what you need, a tight end who can make plays for you in the red area. He had more catches than any other tight end in the NFC a year ago. Third and two for the Eagles. McNabb on a little roll. He's got room to run. Oh. And he is creamed by Datwin. <laughs> Holy <laughs> smokes. You know, this is one of those plays where the quarterback is going to run. He's, he's determined he's going to get to the outside because he sees it's wide open. Oh. And when Donovan McNabb puts his arm up to fake like he's going to throw, Datwin didn't buy it. And all that wind does is watch this collision. Here comes 59. Bam! Hits him right in the shoulder and knocks Donovan McNabb back. And he doesn't make it. He's going to be short. I'm going out on a limb for my first time this year. The question on that wind coming out of Texas A&M, was he big enough? Donovan McNabb thinks so. Does now. He's certainly fast enough. Yes, he is. Into short. What will Andy Reid do? I think you have to. Your defense is playing so well. They've stymied him with the ball backed up in your own by your own goal line. If you miss it, you're at least going to play the field position game because Andy Reid has just got to believe that the Cowboys are not going to do anything on offense. With the injured Deuce Staley, what do you do for a play call? You put it all on McNabb? No, I'll, I'll tell you what I do. I give it to I give it to Buck Halter. McNabb, quarterback sneak. Nope. Oh. Joe thing, never liked that quarterback. The other thing ball. about it, too, I is Dallas to hasn't back. gained a yard yet. Whether it's Buck Halter, <laughs> whether it's Martin, no matter who the back is, that's the guy that I try and get the ball to. Okay. Fourth and a couple of inches. Trash goes in motion. Empty backfield. Trying to spread the field in McNabb. Quarterback keeper. Second effort. Got it at the I 10. think a quarterback keeper is the way to go. I really do. <laughs> <laughs> He can change his mind faster than anybody who's talking talk about yeah. backpedaling. This guy could. You ever play defense? No, but I'll tell you one thing. I never, I never liked the quarterback draw. I just didn't carry the weight to be able to do it. I used to get knocked back all the time. You should have been able to make it as short as you are. You should have been able to just like sneak under people. <laughs> I know you didn't go up over the top. <laughs> Regardless, they got the first down. The ball is inside the 10, so it's first and goal. Empty backfield again. McNabb again with tremendous protection. Throws wide open, touchdown Lewis. That's too easy, boys. That is too easy. You cannot blame the secondary of the Dallas Cowboys. Donovan McNabb just has too much time. You cannot expect defensive backs to cover receivers for that long a period of time. Oh, well, you're absolutely right about that one. And Akers will now try to give Dallas the lead. <laughs> and Philadelphia on top, 7-6 here at the vet. You'd smile too if you had four out of five for 55 yards. The Eagles, heavily favored in this one, go on top by one.
The Eagles get a good drive and score to take the lead on the Cowboys. 7-6 with 3.49 to go. First quarter of play from the vet in Philadelphia. 62 yards and nine plays over four and a half minutes. And Chad Lewis caught the touchdown pass from Donovan McNabb. Akers will kick it away. Wiley and Swinton are deep to receive. Swinton across the 20. And held up at the 25. Cowboys looking to get that offense untracked. The first two drives, they gained minus five yards. A little early for Halloween, perhaps, but not in Philadelphia, where the Eagles lead the Cowboys 7-6. to six. That's not a disguise. <laughs> Wearing Hugh Douglas's number on one side. Cowboys take over at their own 26. Good protection of the right this time. Down the middle. Knocked away at the last moment. McGarrity was down there. And Bobby Taylor with that closing speed. And Troy Benson both got back there. He just doesn't realize how fast Joey Galloway is. If Anthony Wright gets this ball out front, Joey Galloway has got him. He's leaving Bobby Taylor in the dust and then has to slow down and try and make it. Anthony Wright just can't get it out far enough. Nice job by Bobby Taylor coming in and making the play. Galloway could be the fastest player in the National Football League. Emmett, maybe two. You didn't see the safeties in that last shot. And one of the reasons the corners are so good, the safeties blitz a lot. Vincent and Taylor outstanding at the corners. And the safeties, Moore and Brian Dawkins, who made the Pro Bowl last year. It is just so nice to have corners that you can count on to cover man to man. Thank you. A little bit of a luxury. Yeah. Third and eight. Anthony Wright to the shotgun, blitz coming. Under pressure, throws it away. Intended for Galloway, but not even close. I'll tell you, he does not have a chance. Uh, Anthony Wright has no chance. Brandon Whiting, when you're sending more people again, we talk about this every week, you send more people than they have to block. Look at Whiting 98. Wright has to get rid of the ball long before he wants to. Well, Mike Lucky's got to do a little bit better job of stepping yes, up and does. trying to take Brandon Whiting on, too. You just can't throw a little feeble flipper at him and expect to slow him down. Mitchell waits at the 27 for the punt of Micah Noor. Keep it quicker. Mitchell came up, couldn't get it again, takes it on the hop. And back out to the 38-yard line. Tomorrow night on Monday Night Football, Terrell Owens and the 49ers will battle Curtis Martin and the Jets. That's at 9 Eastern on ABC. Then next Sunday night we'll be in San Francisco as Chris Winkie and the Panthers travel to Three Cow Park to take on Jeff Garcia and the 49ers. 8.30 Eastern on ESPN. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. And straight back from the 39, little pump fake, and then throws to Lewis. He's wide open. There's a flag down. Lewis hurdles a tackler and goes down to the 36-yard line. Now check the penalty. Dexter Coakley hit the deck, number 52. And they're all walking back to Philadelphia. This is offensive pass interference. Pass interference, number 89, offense. Sometimes you wonder how a tight end gets so wide open. That's how. You're, you're going to see how right about now. <laughs> I mean, Chad Lewis is open. And watch in the middle of the field. See Dexter Coakley go down? <laughs> That's how you get wide open. Well, Dexter Coakley did a good job. He, he held his position. It's the only place that the defensive players really have a chance to do something is if they're in position and they get run over. You get the flag the other way. But did you see the hurdle at the end of the play from the tight end? Somebody catch him in midair, he'll never do that again. 
Buck Halter. And the Dallas defense is there. Dallas spent the entire offseason trying to shore up their running game, and they've done a good job of it. Run defense. That's what I mean. The running, the stopping the running game. Yeah. Last year they were gashed several times. Right now they're right in the middle of the pack in the NFL, aver averaging 100.5 yards on defense against the run. Second and 19 now for the Eagles. Four man rush. McNabb hit as he throws, incomplete, intended for James Thrash. Let's get on to Susie Culper for more on Donovan McNabb. Well, Mike, we all see the finished product, but few get to see the work and the workouts in the offseason. He goes to a training center in Phoenix where he does punishing exercises and all kinds of offbeat drills. There are drills for his vision and then for his reflexes. He stands in front of a goal, like a hockey goalie, and they throw dog toys at him. That's any kind of asymmetrical ball, and he has to stop it. The hard work pays off. You can see it here, can't you? Well, my schnauzer can catch the dog <laughs> toys, but he can't do the rest of it. McDam wants the screen and dropped by the fullback Cecil Martin. And Donovan puts his hands up. He says, my bad. He throws this one down around Cecil's ankles, and he doesn't really give him a chance to make a play on the ball. Landetta comes on to kick it away on fourth and long. McGarity is deep. Beautiful kick by Landetta. McGarry slips and goes down. Still trying to stay on his feet now. Finally down at the 20. 51-yard kick, only a one-yard return. Emmett Smith leads that offense on the field. The guy he's chasing is somebody he has idolized and adored, Walter Payton. The numbers on both in their brilliant careers. Walter finished with 16,726 yards. At 100 yards a game, Emmett would be about 14 games behind Walter Payton. Tell you what, though, Dallas has a balanced attack. They really do. Rushing, they're minus two yards. Passing, they're minus two yards. Emmett trying to change that. Dancing and got back to the line of scrimmage. Maybe a yard. Let's go back to Susie. You know, it's hard for Emmett Smith to put into words the emotion of closing in on Walter Payton. He's looked up to him for so long. Last year on the way to the Super Bowl, he was on the plane with Walter's brother, Eddie. And Eddie said the family felt that if anyone was going to break it, they would want it to be Emmett. He says if he ever gets to that point, he'll be such a mess. He won't even be able to come out of the tunnel for the game. You know, Susie, so many people have said if anybody breaks that record, they'd like it to be Walter Payton. Or Payton's record, they'd like it to be Emmett Smith. Here comes the blitz, in as he throws. And just incomplete. Boy, I'll tell you what, here Brian comes. Brian Dawkins uh, coming again. Brian Dawkins, I mean, he's just, he, he's got to be loving every single moment of this game. Because he doesn't worry about, you got corner coverage with two guys that can play man to man. And watch number 20, here he comes again. Really, you've got to step up and block. I mean, that's Emma trying to block. He didn't block anybody. Take a look at this. Brian Dawkins, number 20, goes right through Emmett. Now he's going to hit the arm of right there. The ball goes up here, almost intercepted. Third and nine. They don't come with a blitz this time, and there's the draw to Wiley. And Wiley about four yards shy of a first down. Dallas will have to kick it away again. Brandon Whiting chased him down from behind. We got two teams tonight. Well, one of them can't run or pass. That's Dallas. And the other one can't run, which means that's Philadelphia. It's Donovan McNabb's football game to basically win and or lose. Exactly. We are coming to the end of the first quarter. The best Dallas drive so far was the one you just saw. Six yards. That's it. That's the end of the quarter here at the Vet in Philly. After a mistake-prone first quarter, the Eagles have come back to take the lead behind Donovan McNabb.
We start the second quarter with the Cowboys ready to punt and Emmett Smith looking over some of the offensive strategies, looking for something that might work. Donovan McNabb already has it. They're up 7-6. to six. The defense has simply stopped Dallas in its tracks. They had the one, Dallas had the one big opportunity to try and get the ball to Joey Galloway in the first quarter, and Anthony Wright just underthrew him. Mitchell waits at his 30. Mike and Orr to punt it away. High snap. Mitchell from the 28. Brian Mitchell, the punter to beat. And Norris slowed him down. 45-yard punt, 55-yard return. 20 minutes ago, you said when Mitchell does some bad things, he tries to come back and make something positive happen. Yeah! And this time, <laughs> Ryan Mitchell actually gets hit as soon as he catches the ball, breaks that one tackle, and if it wasn't for Mike Adour, he's got a touchdown. There's the first tackle that he breaks. Now after that, actually, there was a hand on him there, and here comes Noor, the putter. Noor does a, a super job just turning him back inside and get some help. If he'd been able to go all the way, he would have tied an NFL record for total kick returns toward the end zone, incomplete for Brown. I just, I can't believe the way the defensive line of the Dallas Cowboys is rushing. They, they move up the field four or five yards, and then they absolutely stand still. The defensive ends just don't move. Donovan McNabb is in such a comfort zone. The Cowboys are just rushing four guys. I believe that they've got to start bringing some linebackers and some pressure on them, or he's going to be able to stand there and pick the secondary apart. Second and ten. McNabb with time again over the middle. Lewis. Touchdown. Too easy, boy. You mean pick them apart like that? Well, that's one of the things I was thinking about. Mitchell's punt return set it up, and Lewis has his second touchdown catch. Chad Lewis working in the middle of this defense. You just can't expect Darren Woodson and George Teague to be anywhere near the tight ends when the quarterback has that much time to throw the football. Akers for the point after. Woo! And the Eagles have exploded against the Cowboys after being down 6 nothing. They're now a 14-6 at the bet. We'll be back to Sunday Night Football after this. All right, Boomer, thanks very much. Todd Pinkston making a phone call saying, did you see that? Mike Zimmer, the defensive coach and coordinator, talking it over with his secondary. Wiley and Swinton are deep for Dallas. Swinton from the five. Almost got back to the 20. We know Donovan McNabb has had so much time. There's Chad Lewis. What he's going to do is he's going to go down and just run right in between the safeties. Donovan McNabb will have so much time. Little motion, set in the pocket. Wait, wait, wait. Now find your tight end over the middle. Beats Darren Woodson. George T can't keep him out of the end zone. We talked about this offense early in the game. Relying on the tight end down around the goal line. That's what makes the West Coast offense, in my opinion, so effective in the red area. The numbers for Dallas are ugly. 15 plays, they gained two yards. Emmett, six carries for minus one. Emmett again. Dawkins got him. He lost another yard. Brian right, Dawkins is just, all he is doing, folks, he's hanging around the line of scrimmage. And he's deciding, I mean, I know this stuff is called. But he's, he's playing this thing just like a linebacker. This is one tough kid. And watch number 20. He's going to sit on the outside. Wait, boy, that, you talk about wait until Emmett gets done making his move and then attack. That's another one-yard loss. 
A blitz is not always against the pass. Run blitzes, as you just saw, can be very effective. Anthony Wright, short set, out in the flat, incomplete. Caldwell with nice coverage out there against the backup tight end, Johnny Huggins. Emmett having a chance to go absolutely nowhere. I think the Cowboys are going to have to start to throw the football a lot more effectively. Touch the ball, seven rushes, minus two yards. He's heading to back towards out. Barry. Yeah, I know. Backing up right now. Wiley is on the third down back. It's third and 11. Here they come. Unloads. They got lucky the tight end, but he'll only get to the 25. They'll have to punt away again. This is a four yard pattern because that's the only guy that, that, that got open. It's lucky the tight end. It's a four-yard well, pattern. He picked up a yard. Also, that's the amount of time that Anthony Wright has to be able to throw the football. Exactly, Joe. Enough time for somebody to go down the field four yards. The last play, they had four guys out in the pattern. To what? By the time Wright had to throw the ball, there wasn't a guy more than six yards downfield. Nor to kick to Mitchell, who had a 55-yard return the last time. High floater. Mitchell makes the fair catch at the 31. 41-yard kick and no return. The story tonight has been the Eagle defense. They have totally shut down the Dallas Cowboys. South Street in Philadelphia, where we have a 14-6 Eagles lead over the Dallas Cowboys. It's a very intimate city, and you see an awful lot walking down the streets. McNabb under pressure and throws behind Mitchell. In case you joined us late, let's go back on game track and show you what has happened. Brian Mitchell fumbled the opening kickoff, then he fumbled a punt, each set up a Dallas field goal. But Donovan McNabb has come back and thrown two touchdown passes to Chad Lewis, and Emmett Smith has been stymied by that Raging Eagle defense, seven carries, minus two yards. McNabb again with good protection. Now it breaks down, and McNabb is sacked back at the 23. Michael Myers out of Alabama. Well, that's it. It's the second time they blitz with Darren Woodson. Darren Woodson came the last time and gotten down to McNabb's face and from the left side. This time, Woodson goes back to the right side and he's on the top. You see him coming in here? He gets blocked, but they put some pressure on But this is basically a coverage sack. There was no place to throw the ball. Myers, a 292-pound left defensive tackle, his first sack of the season. Nate Brown comes in as a third wide receiver on third and 17. Pressure again. They want to throw it in the flat to Martin, and it's tipped incomplete. So a good series for the Dallas defense. Well, the only reason why the, the series was better is because they decided to bring pressure and not allow Donovan McNabb to sit in the pocket all day and pick him apart. That's a good job by Mike Zimmer, the defensive coordinator. He really is trying to protect those young corners. Sure. And he's trying to play a, a cover two type of defense, the same that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers play. Landetta to kick it away to McGarrity. McGarrity to the 38. Loose ball. McGarrity in there fighting for it, but the Eagles have better numbers. And Philadelphia has the ball. The third turnover in the kicking game tonight. And Richard Cook gets the recovery. I'll tell you, McGarrity, he, he just gets the ball well, slapped away he makes, by Ike Reese. He makes a cardinal mistake. He puts the ball in his left hand, which is where all the pursuit is coming from, instead of putting it in his right so he can protect it. That's just a simple ball-carrying error. And Dave Campo's troops 
can't keep giving the Eagles opportunities to make plays. Well, the special we, teams coaches are going to be going nuts tonight. How come we didn't see Joe Avizano on that play? <laughs> Mitchell and Reeder, the second set of backs, are in with McNabb. Bad snap. McNabb on the run. He just covers it and is touched down at the 48-yard line. Hank Fraley, the center, decides to airmail one. <laughs> That's really got to be a sick feeling. <laughs> Comes the ball and I can't get it. Well, it's it, it trust is. me, it is sick. Well, look at it. I mean, the, the ball—he never had a chance Airborne. to touch it. If he was seven feet eight, he couldn't have gotten a hand on it. But you know what he did? So many other young quarterbacks will try and pick the ball up and make a play. He just got on top of it and didn't compound an error. That's just good, smart quarterback. Fraley playing for Bubba Miller, who broke an ankle in the last preseason game, the starting center a year ago. McNabb wants the screen, and this one's batted away. Nice defensive play, Demetric Evans. Let's check in with Chris Berman. In a battle of 2-0 teams, a major statement made by the St. Louis Rams. Kurt Warner, four touchdown passes. This one to Torrey Holt. Marshall Park, three touchdowns. Rams all over the Dolphins, 42-10, Mike. Ooh. Chris, that offense just looks absolutely unstoppable. Well, Miami's a heck of a defensive team. Yeah, but the Rams, you talk about their defense. Now, those are the guys that were bad last year. They put it together. Third and 27. Martin, eight hurdles and is decked by Greg Ellis. Hello. Well, remember when you were talking about Chad Lewis hurdling a guy? This is what happens to you when you start hurdling people. And they're going to put you into, into like a little semi-coma. <laughs> right? Watch this. Up in the air, and bam! He clears Laramore. Yeah, oh yeah, but, but he, he doesn't didn't clear, clear Ellis. <laughs> <laughs> Never had a chance to come down. Kareem Laramore goes low, and Greg oh. Ellis goes high. Landetta will kick it again. So Philadelphia not able to take advantage of the opportunity because of the bad snap. Now can McGarity redeem himself? Beautiful punt hangs up in the air. And the Eagles were down it at the six. Excellent play on the special teams. A 35-yard hanger by Landetta. And Damian Douglas takes it at the six. It's still an eight-point game here in Philadelphia. Ginger Ale. Out and out refreshment. I don't know what my mother calls me more often. Jimmy or you must be hungry. At her table, there's always a helping of this, a taste of that, and you get as much as you want. Which is how Olive Garden brings you their never-ending pasta bowl. Have Alfredo with penny. Or how about bolognese and meat sauce with fettuccine? You pick your homemade sauces, you pick your pastas, you get all you want. It's all delicious and it's just $7.95. Tonight I'm having it with my brother. Mom calls him. Did you eat yet? Olive Garden. When you're here, you're family. <laughs> if the way it's made doesn't convince you, or the durability, or the safety, or the comfort, or the performance, or the way you're treated, if all that doesn't make you want to buy a Saturn, no offer will. Of course, we could be wrong. Get 0% APR financing on all Saturn models. For restrictions, see your retailer. Come on, you guys. Tell him I'm not discussing anything until he acknowledges human error is part of the game. And you tell him that not one game ever has been ruined by instant replay. Not one. Here are the numbers into the second quarter. The Cowboys have nine yards and six points, courtesy of two Eagle turnovers. The Eagles still under 100 yards, but they scored two touchdowns. And now Dallas has to start from its own six-yard line. Look for the Eagles to put a little pressure on. Hambrick will get the carry. Lost the football! Damon Moore trots into the end zone from nine yards out. Yeah, baby! That's Hambrick's fourth carry 
of the year, and he coughed it up. There's a guy that's sick to his stomach. Explain something to me. You've got one of the greatest all-time carriers of the ball on your football team, and you're in an area where you need to protect the football, and he's not on the field. I blame the coaches there, to be honest with you. Now, the fumble happened, but I still blame the coach for not having Emmett Smith in there. You need to protect the football in this area of the field. Akers for the poor master. What is he doing on the sidelines in that situation? Timeout on the field. 21-6. Eagles running away with it. Dave Campo is shell-shocked at this point as his Cowboys were ahead 6-0. They have now given up 21 unanswered points, and they have done it pretty easily. Mm. Wiley and Swinton deep on the kickoff team. Swinton from the 10. Has a seam and hit hard as he got to the 35. It's been a game of turnovers, opening kickoff. Brian Mitchell, one of the best all time, coughs it up. That led to a field goal. Then Mitchell on a punt return, coughs it up. That led to a field goal. Wayne McGarity didn't protect the ball. That led to a touchdown. And then Hambrick, an easy touchdown there for Damon Moore. Mike, the thing about those fumbles is two of them were caused by the opposing teams. Two of them, the guys ran into their own players and put them on the ground. Dallas goes back to the ground, and they'll lose several, and the Hall of Famer in waiting is swallowed up by Corey Simon. Well, Corey Simon, I'm telling you, he almost gets the handoff. Corey Simon was there when the ball was handed off. He, oh, <laughs> if he had a guy that he didn't score. I mean, nobody, you talk about you can't slow down. Look at Emmett just gets the ball. He's just trying to put the ball away, and there's Corey Simon. This guy's a nine-time Pro Bowler, the league MVP, a Super Bowl MVP, and he can't get out of his own backfield. He doesn't have a chance. Right with a little time, Galloway. And it hit the ground, incomplete. Well, that was a good throw by Anthony Wright, and Galloway couldn't bring it in. The way you get your team going is somebody, one of your big guys are going to have to make a play. That was Joey Galloway's opportunity. Anthony Wright steps up, makes a nice throw. Joey comes diving in, the ball just bounces out. Somebody's got to make a play for this football team to at least give them a breath and a chance and really get their defense off the field. Third and 16. They have yet to convert a third down. This is exactly where Jim Johnson, the defensive coordinator, wants him. Pressure on right, hit from behind, loose ball, still loose. The Eagles have it. Oh, it's Hugh Douglas. Holy Hugh Douglas cow. comes all the way around behind and almost rips Anthony Wright's arm off. I mean, again, I agree with Joe. You got to slow him down. Here's number 53. Watch this. Close out at him. Look at this. He grabs him. Bam. And then he gets hit in the front. I thought he grabbed his arm. He really grabs his shirt in the back and his arm. Ball slips out. Oh, man. Douglas, who had 15 sacks last year with a big play there. Now, if I'm Andy Reid right here, I'm looking for Chad Lewis, my tight end, one more time to try and put it on the play. They may challenge this. The reason why they'll challenge it to see if Anthony Wright's arm was in motion and it would be ruled as an incomplete pass. Dave, you're going to lose it. It's worth the shot, though. No, I mean, no, no, I decided again. No. Somebody from upstairs got to look at the replay. And now a flag is down. Right of the snap, false start, 74 offense, five-yard penalty, remains first down. Brzezinski was in motion. Now, Anthony Wright's arm has to be going forward with the ball in it. You see Hugh Douglas grab it. The ball is out. Nice job, guys. Good camera work. 
opportunity to see it exactly the way the refs are. And that's good com communication by the Dallas coaches not to blow a timeout on a challenge. They want the screen. Martin, the fullback, blockers in front, inside the 20 to the 18. One of the things that's happening, and that's not blowing smoke, but at least the Dallas defense is still hanging in there. You said something at the beginning that, that Dave Campbell likes about his football team is that they don't quit, Joe, and they go forever, especially this defense. The defense finally, on that last series of downs, they blitzed a little bit, but they're going to have to blitz a lot, and that exposes everything. It would be a victory for them to just allow a field goal here instead of a touchdown that would make it 28 to 6. Play action by McNabb. And incomplete. Tried to get the tight end Jeff Thomason, who's normally in there as a blocker. There's one element of Donovan McNabb's passing mechanics that bothers me, and that's he likes to jump too much. Watch this. Little play action. Now, Chad, Lu Chad Lewis out in front. See him get up in the air? He, he does this an awful lot. Tries to jump, and you might say, well, he's trying to get the ball around Greg Ellis. But he does it on screens. He does it trying to throw crossing routes. If one thing he's going to have to eliminate to become more efficient and consistent as a passer. Third and eight for McNair. Buckhalter, nice cut to the nine-yard line. First down. You know, Philadelphia has all but abandoned the running game. They tried to run three or four times. Nothing happened. So <laughs> I, I personally think when you have field conditions where they are, throwing the football is your advantage. Donovan does a nice job of looking to the left, giving Corell a chance to sneak out in the right flat and pick up the first down. First and goal, Eagles. Buckhalter behind Martin. To the five. Down to Susie and more on Corell Buckhalter. It's unbelievable. This is the first game he started in almost three years. He was a backup at Nebraska. His high school coach had to do the hard sell to even get the coaches at Nebraska to invite him to play there. The tape he sent, though, was from his final high school game as a senior. They handed him the ball on every play of the first half. 47 carries, 387 yards. That'll get you a scholarship. Cecil Martin is the single setback. And he'll get it, but they'll whistle this one dead. Okay, that seems to be happening. Prior to the snap, false start, 72 offense, five yard penalty, remains second down. That's Trey Thomas, but it seems to be happening when they are trying to run the ball, Joe. He's at the line of scrimmage for a long period of time, and these guys don't get settled. I mean, they get unsettled. And they're moving. Well, what happens is you try and audibleize against a moving defense. The Cowboys want to move their front. They know they're not that big, so they've got to try and find gaps to shoot and try and figure out a place to get Darren Woodson to fire one of them. McDamp for the end zone. Pinkston touchdown. He beat Mario Edwards on a post. There isn't a corner out there that could have stopped this. I don't care who you are, how good you are, Troy Vincent, Bobby Taylor, Mario Edwards, it wouldn't matter. This is just an excellent catch. Yeah, and, look, and, and again, the reason it couldn't have been defended, where he put it. He put it high and away, and the only guy that could catch it is Pinkston. Akers, this one's blocked. The Cowboys turn aside the extra point, but they're still down 27-6. And for Todd Pinkston, that will be a souvenir, his first career touchdown catch. Again, so much time for Donovan McNabb. Look to the right, look to the right, come on back. Now watch this catch. That ball is thrown high and away. Look at this thing go. Look at him go up in the air to go get this. This is a little bit of Lynn Swanish in the Super Bowl. Remember when he made that great catch? Boy, did he go up and get that one. 
Donovan McNair with his third touchdown pass of the night. And you've got to hand it to Andy Reid. He thought one of the weaknesses of his team a year ago was the wide receivers, Charles Johnson and Terrence Small. Charles Johnson was very close to him. He really loved the guy. But you got to do what you got to do as a head coach. And he went out and got thrashed, elevated Pinkston, who was a second-round draft choice a year ago. Now he's got two guys that can go get it. And Emmett is wondering what is going on. Wiley and Swinton are deep. Philadelphia has exploded for 27 points after being down 6 0. Wiley and Swinton are deep to return again as the rain continues to fall. Low line drive. Wiley, 20, 25. Football's loose. The Eagles have it again. That's four. Philadelphia, they turn it over twice on a kickoff return. I'm going to show you why this happened. Because Wiley just didn't run when he was committed. He's jogging up the field looking for a block. When you're on a kick return team, you just got to go flat out as hard as you can. You can't come lollygagging up into the wedge and expect not to get blasted. That's what happened to him on that one. Watch this. Look. See, he's not running hard. He's running high. He's sort of looking around. And the ball, and he just bumps into somebody, and the ball comes out. Jamie Reeder appeared to hit it with his arm or his elbow. It came loose. The fourth special teams turnover. Martin in the flat. I'll tell you what. On that fumble, you're actually right. I, he was... Here is a defensive man going down, trying to cover the kick, and all he does, he is being blocked. He turns, and his arm happens to hit the ball because you're not protecting the football. Of the five fumbles tonight, I would say that two of them were forced. Three of them were gifts from the guys carrying the football. And Dave Campo just continues to be more and more stunned by what he's seeing. Martin. Hit and taken down by Pepe Zellner. Boy, the Dallas bench looks like they're frozen in time. It's like a pain. Nobody, it is nobody is It's moving. a bad pain right now. You're a Cowboy fan. Well, you know, and, and you get to a point, you're in a game, and you're just trying to figure out, what can I do to just slow this down a little bit? And then, you, you know, a kickoff return, and, and you fumble the ball, give it back to the team that's beating you. I mean, you've got to try some way to slow this down. Incredible number. Dallas minus seven yards in total offense. McNabb trying to buy time, throws for the end zone and out of the end zone. That was Freddie Mitchell, the rookie out of UCLA, couldn't stay in bounds. David Akers is going to come on and try a field goal. I'll tell you right now, Dave Campbell better hope to God that the defense doesn't quit on him. Well, I was just going to say, this will be their opportunity. If there's any quit in them. Nah, they're, they're not. They're not. I'll tell you, they're, they're, they really are fighting. Akers will try from 40. And the three-year veteran is perfect again. 30 to 6, Eagles. Ouch. And Joe, you're right about the turnovers. Sometimes you'll look in the newspaper and you say, well, the defense has done all this stuff. But sometimes the offense just hands it to them. In this case, it was special teams. Go to Susie Culver. Well, as bad as things look for the Dallas Cowboys, it's hard to believe but the veterans on this team, the Emmett Smith and the Woodson, say that this is the most fun these guys have had in a long time. It's because of Dave Campo. He has an attitude here that the guys won't quit. They will not quit tonight. He says the key is to submit to coaching, and they have. They're very coachable. This tonight is painful to watch, but believe it or not, this team will not quit. And they said they were having the most fun they've ever had up until about an hour and a half ago. I think they were talking about practice. <laughs> yeah, the other two kicks. Whoa, this is, I mean, this is ugly. 
This game will only get a few seconds on the highlight film. Wiley and Swinton deep again. I want to see which one of these guys is willing just to take it up and stick it in. If you're going full speed, your attention span is a lot better than sort of cruising on up. Swinton in the end zone. Best kick by Akers, and Swinton will do just that. Three yards deep. Next Sunday night, join Chris Berman and company for NFL Primetime, presented by Miller Lite at 7.30 Eastern. That's followed by Sunday Night Football at 8.30 Eastern. Chris Winkie and the Panthers against Jeff Garcia and the 49ers next Sunday night on ESPN. You can also see all the Sunday night NFL games on ESPN Deportes. Contact your local cable operator or your satellite provider. Dallas so far, minus seven yards on offense. Emmett Smith, eight carries, minus eight yards. This time he got across the line of scrimmage for about one. Don't put this on Emmett Smith. Emmett Smith is still a terrific running back. But, he's but when the only you guy, send so many guys. He's the only guy that can really do anything because, first of all, Anthony Wright has no time to throw the football. None. Zero. Well, also, when you've just got Joey Galloway as your wide receiver and no Rocket Ishmael on the other side to force defenses to play more honestly, the safeties load up inside. The Rockets got two to four weeks with a knee injury. Wright with a little time this time. And throws complete up to the 26 to McGarity. Damon Moore was right there. Joey Galloway, eight catches, 6.4 yards per catch so far this year. No touchdowns. They gave up two number ones for him. Of course, the trade was based on the fact that Troy Aikman's going to be there, and they'd like to add some speed to stretch the field. Joey got hurt in the first game last year, was lost for him. Now he's come back, and the seniors changed around him. Third and four. In the flat to the fullback, Robert Thomas. They got a first down. The first, first down of the game for the Cowboys. 4-14 was the time. I'm, so, I, I'm sorry I got so excited. <laughs> no, first down. What you have to do is the game has gotten out of hand a little bit, but what you have to do as a quarterback in this instance is just keep pushing your players. Just keep getting them in and out of the huddle, making the calls, being a professional. Emmett dives to about the 34. I think the next thing you come back with now is you come back with play action again. Try and get the ball down the field a little bit more. You had Joey Galloway on an in. Try it one more time. Play action is normally the best pass protection you can get because it slows the linebackers down a little bit and gives you an extra body to protect you. I'm glad you said a little bit. It hasn't slowed them down a whole lot. Not a lot. Well, it does if they're not blitzing. If they're blitzing, it doesn't slow them down at all. Here they come. Here they come. Wright got it out in a hurry but threw it behind Galloway and nearly picked off by Bobby Taylor. You know, you can you can just tell Anthony Wright is, is first of all, he's been hit a few times and they were late in the pocket. But you get into a situation where when you see that they're going to blitz, you've got to, you know, in your mind, you're saying, I got to get rid of it right away as fast as I can. And that, that time he threw it, even, even though he threw it soon, it was still almost picked up. There's Quincy Carter, the rookie who has been designated as the starting quarterback, has a sprained right thumb. Oh boy. boy, Wright just got creamed. Whiting came in and had a free run and took advantage of it. Ouch. Anthony, Anthony Wright will not get out of bed till probably Wednesday sometime. Watch Whiting, 98, come right up the middle. Look at this. Bam. Oh. Throw, hit. Throw, hit. Mike Nor will come on to kick to Mitchell. I know Quincy Carter's a competitive kid and would love to be playing. He's but lucky he's not in this Yes, game. he is. Hasn't played in two weeks. And it's blocked. The Eagles have the football on inside the 20 in the Kalu. 
He almost got the one before. But this time, you talk about taking a proper angle. What you have to do is you have to go three yards in front of the punter. And if you do that, you take the ball just right off his foot. Here comes Kalau on the outside. Look at him. Bam! You know what he does, too, is he lays his hands out in front instead of trying to swat it. See, he just lays them out in front. It's a right in the forearm. Joe Avizano's special teams tonight have been absolutely dreadful. McNair. Still under pressure, throws it away. <laughs> you Good could, pressure finally by Hamber. He could have knitted a sweater <laughs> sitting you, back there. You know what he did? He, after he fakes, up, I'm telling you, Pinkston ran two moves. He was going to do a little out and up, and that didn't work. So Donovan McNabb standing back here. Joe, he started moving his hand. Please, come, somebody come this way, please. You know, you know how hard it is for a quarterback in the pocket to stand? Quarterbacks have little clocks in their heads, okay? He goes back in the pocket. He sits, he sits, he sits. Now he just he doesn't know what to do now. Well, watch him sit. Okay. Watch him nuts. I don't hey, know where to here, go. Come here. Okay. <laughs> McNabb gets this one inside the 10 yard line. Lewis, the tight end, that's his first catch. It wasn't for a touchdown. Check it, his second that wasn't for a score. He's got two scores. Andy Reid will keep on throwing this football. It is a division game. You just keep piling points up. Matter of fact, four of their next five are division games. Twice with Arizona, once with the Giants. The Eagles have a chance to do some damage in the division. Third and a yard. And Martin down to the six. He'll have, or Buckhalter, he's got the first down. And we have reached the two-minute warning officially at 1.57. It is 30 to 6. ESPN Sunday Night Football is brought to you by Saturn, now with two distinctively different car lines, the L-Series and S-Series. By Charles Schwab, expert advice that's objective, uncomplicated, and not driven by commission. By the crisp, clean, less sweet taste of Canada Dry Ginger Ale, out and out refreshment. And by 10, 10, 220. Dial it and all calls up to 20 minutes are only 99 cents. Ironically, the Liberty Bell, made in 1752, made in London. And now it's inside. Was outside for a long time in the city. Now it's got its own little home. Eagles bidding for more. McNabb on a little roll. Martin to the one. Michael, just this quarter, the second quarter, Philadelphia has started inside Dallas's 30-yard line five out of six times in one quarter. It's good. You know, it just doesn't do a whole lot for your total yards in a game, but it, it'll do a lot for the scoring. <laughs> McNabb, still little play action fake, gets outside. Martin just puts his head down, tries to get in the end zone. The Eagles on the verge of a scoring record here in the first half. McNair. Incomplete. There's a marker down, however. It was intended for Lewis. Marcus Steele, rookie out of USC, on the coverage. This is holding on Dallas, and this will be first and goal. Automatic first down. That's exactly what they needed. Four more downs. Holding. 43 defense. Penalized half the distance to the goal. And a first down. It's reached a point where Dave Campo's defense now has got to try and figure out who Andy Reid wants to score this touchdown. And it's reached that point because the play action fake is holding the linebackers. My guess is he's going to try and give it to a running back to score. Buck Halter and flags fly on this play. Well, that would be a five-yard penalty against Philly. So now... Let's go through right it again. Snap. False start. 64 offense. Five-yard penalty. 
Remains first down. Now my choice is Chad Lewis, the tight end again. I think it's got to be 74. Because they don't even have a 64 on their team. 74 is Brzezinski, the left guard playing for John Wellborn. The Eagles' all-time record for points and a half is 35. They already have 30 here. Thrash back of the end zone. George Teague with good coverage. Good job by the Dallas Cowboys down around the goal line. They're not buying into the play action faking. The secondary and the linebackers getting back in the end zone. Well, they got to run a play here. Run. Not run a play. Run. On the ground. <laughs> the reason. Get the clock started. There's <laughs> seven seconds. Get the clock moving. Mike Zimmer watching his young guys try and play with their backs against the wall almost every time they get the ball. Buck Halter straight up the middle. You know, Joe mentioned these young guys get the ball, but when you look at it, there's 43 guys in a 53-man roster with four years experience or less, or less on this Dallas Cowboy team. Oh, they're young. There's 30 some guys with three years or less. I mean, this is a young football team. And it's not an excuse, it's a fact. A lot of it in the secondary too. They have been so handicapped by the turnovers. Third and goal for McNabb. Complete. That'll bring up a fourth end goal. Copley and Teague, excellent defense. Little sprint out by Donovan McNabb trying to work outside. They've got that's double coverage. That qualifies as double coverage. Teague on the inside, Copley screening him, almost pushing him before he gets the ball. Seven snaps inside the 10. Dallas does not give up a touchdown. Small consolation as Akers comes on and knocks through a field goal. So barring, barring another mistake, the Eagles will not set a scoring record this half, but they are up 33 to six. At the half, it's the Toyota Halftime Show. Chris Berman will be along with the fastest three minutes as well. Bond still chasing history, and we'll have Major League Baseball playoff updates all coming up on the Toyota Halftime Show. Chris will be along as soon as we're done with the final 16 seconds here. I think the Cowboys at this point would have been just happy to see the clock run out on this half. Well, and, and another thing to bring up, too, that we were talking about earlier, and, and the one thing that Dave Campbell is, does like about his football team, the defense not quitting again. I mean, they had the ball down there for a long period of time. better not. There's a whole half coming up. Yeah, that's right. I that's, think the, the, the thing that you have to be careful of if you're Joe Avizano, the special teams coach, and Dave Campo is, will the, will the ball get kicked in the end zone so fortunately you can get the half over? Or will either of these guys have to field it and bring it out and then it becomes just a question of what happens if. Wiley and Swinton waiting for Aker's kick. He put the last one in the end zone. Swinton at the goal line. Got it back to the 24 and no further with nine seconds to go on the first pass block. The Eagles scored at will. McNabb to his tight end Chad Lewis. That was the first one. And then the pro bowler caught a second touchdown strike from McNabb. There's Hambrick's fumble. And the return by Damon Moore for the touchdown. And Todd Pinkston added one. Got ugly in a hurry, didn't it? Quickly. Well, really, the, or Wiley, really the first real hole they've had to run through all night. 
That's the end of the first half. 33-6. Now let's join Chris Berman for the Toyota Halftime Show. All right, Michael, thank you very much. The good news for the Cowboys. Who is Donovan McNabb has certainly been getting it done tonight. Basically, if this was a fight, they would have stopped it by now. What? I tell you, you talk about Donovan McNabb, and Joe, you know, he, he's an excellent quarterback. He does a lot of good things. But most importantly is his defense. Their defense has done a job. They turned the ball over twice at the beginning on, on uh, kickoff returns and held them only three points each time. And the Dallas Cowboys wanted to keep Donovan McNabb in the pocket, and he's done an excellent job of being very, very consistent with his throws from the pocket. Wiley and Swinton again deep. And this one will go out of bounds. The first half numbers, if you are a Dallas fan, are simply appalling with what they have been able to do on offense or not been able to do. They have 11 yards, five rushing, six passing, as opposed to 143 for the Philadelphia Eagles. And they have turned the ball over four times after the Eagles gave them two early gifts and a 6-0 lead. Since it was 6-0, it's been all Eagles. Three of them have been on the special teams. But that's what's really so discouraging to the Dallas Cowboys. They had two great opportunities at the beginning of this ball game and couldn't take advantage of either one of them. Getting a field goal where the field position they had is not any good. I'm sorry. It's just and that's credit to the Eagle defense. They really stepped up twice in a row. Showing blitz as Emmett gets it carry and a little running room. Emmett Smith straight up the middle, still on his feet to the 22. Don't you just love it for an entire half? They shut Emmett Smith down. Look at the smile. But you see him smiling now because the one thing the Philadelphia Eagles know, you can't keep him down all night long. Look at this run. This is typical Emmett. Protect the ball. And after he's hit, he picked up another 11 yards. 39-yard carry, his longest of the season. Emmett on the toss. Nowhere to go. Hugh Douglas slowed him up, and then Douglas, on the second opportunity, makes the tackle. Right five out of 14, only 22 yards. Emmett Smith, even including that big run, only has 35 tonight. And Galloway has not caught a pass. He came into the game with only eight catches in two games, as Joe pointed out earlier, averaging 6.4 yards a catch. That's what your backup tight end gets. And you can't imagine it getting much better when Quincy Carter comes back as a quarterback because he's such a rookie. Emmett on the toss. Again, nowhere to go. Let's go to the sideline, Susie Colbert. Well, I got some reaction from the Cowboys locker room at halftime. I mean, what do you say to a team that's getting beat this bad? Dave Campo said, look, guys, we're playing for pride. This has been humiliating. Only you can change that. Uh, we'll see what they can do in the second half, Mike. Well, pretty good start for them, Susie, as they come out trying to run the ball. I think if they just hold on to the football, they're going to give themselves a better opportunity to do something. they got Joey Galloway in the backfield. He won't stay there. Thank you. <laughs> Wiley is now the single setback. Here comes the blitz right headed, oh, tip straight up in the air, and almost intercepted by Damon Moore. You know who hit him again? Brian Dawkins. Boy, I'll tell you, Brian Dawkins, if you didn't see the first half, he had a field day with the quarterback. And look at number 20, up in the middle. Here he comes. He's free, no one to block him, and he hits right, right in the mouth. Jeremiah Trotter knocks Stepnowski back, which allows Dawkins to be able to come right up the right side between Larry Allen and Mark Stepnowski. They're going to go for it on fourth down. Why not? They don't need three points. No, they need 27. <laughs> and now they're going to have to use a timeout. Back to that last play for a second. That was a heck of a block by Stepnowski as he recovered to try to protect his quarterback. 
Eagles on top 33-6. And Joe, as a quarterback, you wouldn't want the night Anthony Wright has had. No, not at all. Hurried once, hit three times, knocked down three times, sacked twice. Managed to have a fumble come out as he tried to bring his arm forward as Hugh Douglas just grabbed him and threw him to the ground. He's really getting a baptism under fire. This is only his fifth start. They brought in Tony Banks really to take his job away from him and make him number three, only to release Tony and elevate Quincy Carter to the number one spot. This Eagle defense has 13 sacks in two and a half games this year. Fourth down, Dallas will go. Four-man rush this time. Right with time in the flat. Wiley dives to the 13-yard line. That will be shy of a first down. They'll turn it over. Eagle defense did exactly what they wanted to do. And you take a look at the stars of the offense. McNabb, 11 for 24, efficient. Three touchdowns. Buck Halter just six rushes for 19 yards because they're playing by committee back there. And Chad Lewis, they're all pro tight end. Four receptions, 43 yards, and two touchdowns. Well, they yeah, can't have real big numbers because they keep getting the ball inside the third. Going very far. <laughs> Reader comes in as the blocking back for Buck Halter. And Buck Halter will get the carry. Stacked up as he reached the 15-yard line. Well, on defense, Dallas has accomplished one thing. They've stopped the run. Said one thing. Thank you, Professor. <laughs> That's, what, That's all <laughs> they've stopped is the run. Well, you are quick. Hey, I, hey, I can see that stuff out there. And this is a, this is actually a chance for them to play some defense on the field because everything else has been inside the 30-yard line in the first half. Second and eight. They go to a three-wide receiver set, and Nate Brown checks in. Flash. Not much of a chance to do anything with it as Izell Reese brings him down. Joe, this is an offense that it, it's really versatile because if you look at the first three games with the Philadelphia Eagles, and you brought this up in the first half, first game, Pinkston. Second game, Threat. Right. Third game, Lewis. Pinkston had seven catches for 98 yards in the first game. Thrash had 10 catches for 165 against Seattle in the second. And now Chad Lewis is the guy that's sort of featured here. It makes it very difficult to defend this offense when you're looking at Phil getting ready for him. Third and four. Quarterback draw. McNabb slides in safely. That's the that's other 37. And that's the other element that he brings to this offense. And, and really, we talked about it in the open, Michael. This, this is what the quarterbacks of today are all about. This is why Jerry Jones went and got Quincy Carter, because he sees Quincy becoming a Donovan McNabb. And you look at the job of his line and his backs downfield. Once he makes the commitment to decide to, decide to run, he gets a lot of help from guys blocking down the field. McNabb from behind. Loose ball. McNabb got it back. Pepe, Pepe Zellner. Zellner came around the corner. He's had three big plays tonight defensively. When things go your way in an evening, we've seen fumbles go the other way. But here's Donovan McNabb. He's going to get hit by Pepe, Pepe Zellner, number 93, from the backside. But watch what happens to the ball after Pepe knocks it out. Here, this is a fumble. Bang. Now watch this ball. He throws Donovan McNabb right into the ball. He, well, he rolls over on top of it, Watch knocks it. his hand down. He throws him into the ball. Here he is. Look at that. Thank you. <laughs> Second and 20. Buck Halter. Doesn't get much. Buck Halter, as we told you, split time at Nebraska. He was not a starter, had only one start a year ago. But he got a chance to impress a lot of people when he played in the Senior Bowl. And they got to see the things he didn't do at Nebraska. Block, catch passes. Found out he was a complete player and drafted him in the fourth round. A lot of people wonder, why do you bother with the back when you've got Deuce Staley? Well, Deuce has been hurt, so and Buck Halter gets a chance. That was why Andy Reid went after the young man, because he wasn't sure exactly how, how healthy Deuce would be. They expect him back, hopefully, in a week or two. Third and long, McNabb under pressure down the middle for Lewis. And flags are down. 
Coakley was right there. But all Tony Dixon came in, number 24, and just wiped out. I, I think it looked like he hit Coakley. Pass interference. 52 defense. Dexter First Coakley down. is covering. And number 24, Tony Dixon, comes flying in. Here's the end of this play. There's Coakley. Now watch this. Look at Dixon. Wham! He hits Coakley. You got to take out the guy in the white shirt. Tough to tell from that angle. But the call went against Coakley, who is as fast as any linebacker in the National Football League and is an excellent cover guy. So a break for the Eagles, and they have a first down at the 47 of the Dallas Cowboys. Nice play fake by McNabb. In the double coverage, Pinks was caught in any way. <laughs> now, yeah, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do, Joe. This is only what, our third game of the year. I'm going to deem this a great catch. Wow. Even better than his touchdown? I've never deemed anything before. Never uh, deemed anything. This what? is better than his touchdown. Watch the timing again. Going up for the ball, Pinkson, between two defenders and catching the ball, and it's raining, folks. There's the difference in a wide receiver being able to play the ball. Also gets a face mask. He slows down, goes up in between Mario Edwards, and looks like Darren Woodson. A guy who caught only eight passes a year ago as a rookie out of SMU, and there's the touchdown, Buck Holter. I think he might just keep that ball. Yeah, he was going to bust it, Joe, and then he decided, no, I want to keep it. I think I'll keep this one. Pinkston got his first one in the first half. A lot of collecting going on tonight. This hole is to the left-hand side of the defense, the right-hand side of the offense, and wasn't even touched. David Akers on for the point after. And it's 40 to 6. Eagles. Timeout on the field. We're in the third quarter at the vet. ESPN Sunday Night Football is brought to you by State Farm Insurance. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. By 1010-220, dial it, and all calls up to 20 minutes are only 99 cents. You're looking at a place called Pat's King of Steaks, founded by Pat Oliveri in 1930, located at a famous Italian market in South Philly. Nothing more famous up here than... Uh, Cheese steaks and Paul, what's uh, what's your review of your week in Philadelphia? Four of those to go, boys. <laughs> you mean four more? Four more. Keep it coming. coming. From the 29 down to Susie Culver, she has more on Pinkston. Well, there is such a noticeable difference in him from last year to this year. The biggest problem last year was just the lack of confidence. He listened to everybody that said he was too small and too skinny. Well, Troy Vincent took care of that. First minicamp, he grabs him by the numbers, practically threw him against the fence. He said he was looking to break his back, show him that he can play physical football. And now you can see, goes up against double coverage. This kid is really doing it this year, and it's because he has all the confidence. Susie, it's obvious he has great hands. Draw play, Emmett, there's that burst. He swallowed up at about the 36, Darwin Walker out of Tennessee and on the tackle. That's going to help Anthony Wright out an awful lot, gaining some yards on first and 10. I talked to Jim Johnson earlier this week, the defensive coordinator of the Eagles. What he basically said was, we want to get the Cowboys in third and long so that we can bring heat on them. If Emmett continues to be able to pick up yards and the guys up front create holes, it'll help out this offense an awful lot and then not allow the Eagles to go after him. Emmett in the first half lost three yards on 10 carries, second half four for 42. And this will be offsides against the Eagles as they came with a blitz a little early this time. Encroachment. 
Defense. First down. Five yard penalty. Results in a first down. Emmett has always been brilliant against the Eagles. October 31st, 1993, rushed for 237 yards on 30 carries, one touchdown. That covered 62 yards, and it was a 23-10 win over Philadelphia. Smith set the record for most yards rushing in a game, breaking Tony Dorsett's mark of 206. That was against Philadelphia, December 4th, 1977. And Emmett has averaged more yards a game against the Eagles than anybody that he has played in the NFL. Nice break up there by Bobby Taylor. Most career rushing yards against one team, and Walter Payton ahead of him just about every category. He had 24-84 against Green Bay. Emmett now 22-85 against Philadelphia. And Walter Payton is third on the list against Minnesota. If you get down to the top ten, he's probably in there seven times. Damn it. Still got that burst to midfield, breaks a tackle. Ah, still got that strength. Now, you think there's any quit in this guy? He doesn't have to be out there. It's 40-6. to six. His team is really getting lumped. And he is out there doing everything he can. They asked 29 different runners. Bobby Mitchell, Eric Dickerson, Marshall Falk. Every runner you could think of, the greats in this game. What makes Emmett so great? And they came up with things like vision and legs and smarts and toughness, durability. I believe all of them are the best way to describe him. Troy Hamburg checks in the backfield, and he'll get a couple down to the 37-yard line. The one thing that really describes him is heart. Absolutely, that's on the list too. You know, and when you talk when you talk to coaches about players and guys that really don't make it, and you really you know you think in the draft this guy's going to be a good player, that you could ever see a guy's heart, then we'd have a winner every game. That's sure. the heart of a lion and a warrior and a champion. Oh right man, there. he has something else. little running room and he gets it down to the 34 yard line and people that are sitting at home questioning why are you running the ball if you're behind 40 to 6 this is only their third game of the season this because is a very young team they've got to establish something well Mike because they can't throw the ball I mean come on let's, let's, let's face it they can't throw the football the kid doesn't have time to throw the ball so you can't you have to run it also one other factor is this is a continuing evaluation of a very young group of football players Emmett is back in on third and three. Play action this time by Wright. Now he scrambles. Floats one for Swinton and it's intercepted. Just tried to go down the sideline and right into the arms of Damon Moore. He had a fumble recovery for a touchdown earlier. Gets his second pick. There is a flag down, however. This is going to be roughing the passer. The Cowboys are going to keep this, and Anthony Wright has paid the price. We're going to have to update the stats and put one in there. Near destruction will be a category we've got to add, because he has just taken some unbelievable hits. Oh, he has. Personal foul. Roughing the passer. Number 59, defense. 15-yard penalty. Got a first down. Derek Burgess, the rookie lineman. Oh, Burgess comes from the backside. The ball is already gone, and then he hits him in the back. He's been hit everywhere. You talk about another guy with heart tonight, Anthony Wright. And, and he's a guy, really, that's going to be odd man out, possibly. This is the last year of his contract. The Cowboys want to find out about Quincy Carter. Emmett back in there, right to throw from behind. And Lucky can't hold on to it. Brian Dawkins nearly took it out of his hand. This has been Anthony Wright's night. There's one little screen. Gets swatted back. Right up the middle, Dawkins and Browning bury him. Hugh Douglas knocks the ball out of his hands. You see Whiting come in and take him out again. Then we had the last one by Burgess put him on the ground. When we saw Anthony Wright with Pittsburgh, he was there for uh, a year and part of the next season. We thought, this is a kid who can play in this league. I still think he can. I do, too. Wright 
attack to throw this time out in the flat. That's complete for a minimal game. The thing that's a little discouraging about this whole thing, though, Joe, is you know, going into this game tonight and, and, and talking uh, to, to Coach Campo, Campo, he just said, you know, we do have an experienced offensive line. And they're a pretty good offensive line. But not tonight. No. They haven't done, really have, not, haven't well, done a thing. Well, there's only five of them. Yeah. The Eagles are bringing eight. And the other thing is, under the pressure that Anthony Wright has had, he has stood in the pocket and continued to read the defenses, I think, quite well. Cheverini and Rambo are on the field. Another blitz, and I think Hugh Douglas got an early start. Uh, this could be against Flo Zell Adams, just twitching a little. Uh, false start. 76 offense. It was. Five That's Hugh penalty. Douglas' side. When, when, third down. when you see Hugh Douglas on in a stance and he's in the starting blocks, <laughs> and you're going to twitch a little. <laughs> he may be, he not be the tallest guy, Hugh Douglas, or the biggest guy out there, but he's one of the quickest. You think the linemen are twitching? What's Anthony Wright doing? I would try. I would try some way, shape, or form to get the ball to Joey Galloway in the end zone. I'd throw this one into the end zone somehow. Third and 14. Wright looks that way, and it's picked off on the tip. Not the way to Al Harris. Yeah, baby. Harris lost the ball, and now there's a marker down. Look like Dawkins hit it first, then it goes right to Al Harris, who is the third corner. Dawkins has been everywhere. Well, Dawkins really doesn't tip this. I think it goes through his hands and bounces off his face mask. That's a tip. That's it. a tip drill. Well, they work on that. I know, but it's a header more than a tip drill. During the return, illegal block in the back, number 59 of the intercepting team. Penalized half the distance to the goal. First down. Foul on Derek Burgess, but it is going to be Eagles football. They are already up 40 to 6 in the third quarter. Whoa! I think I caught something. What'd you catch? A cold? <laughs> 406 to go third quarter. Eagles pounding the Cowboys 40 to 6. McNabb leads them out at the 10 after the interception. Buck Halter to the 14. Let's go down to Susie. She is with the Cowboy owner, Jerry Jones. Well, it's obviously such a difficult evening. Wright has played with so much heart, but why Quincy Carter over him? Well, I think that uh, uh, Quincy, first of all, uh, uh, has a lot of potential. And, you know, I hate to say over Anthony Wright, but uh, Quincy has a lot of skills. He's uh, very sharp. Uh, I think that uh, we all think that he has an opportunity to be a uh, Super Bowl winning quarterback. And I hope we don't get run over while we're standing here, Susie. But, but uh, basically, I think we think that uh, uh, Quincy has an opportunity to go farther as a quarterback. But Anthony's showing us some good things, makes us in good shape at quarterback. One of the difficulties is so much money, $27 million to players who aren't even with the team, but there actually is a silver lining for next year. Yes, there is. Um, we, uh, uh, I know our fans are frustrated, and we are too, but uh, we've got uh, a lot of young players that are going to make good players. This does remind me a lot of 89 and 90 uh, when we were able to really turn things around and go on and have uh, real success in Super Bowls. Uh, but I think that also we're under a cap system now, and uh, we're cleaning the, the house, so to speak this year and uh, we should be uh, right at the top maybe uh, first or second next year and being in good shape under the cap how do you deal with guys like Woodson like Emmett who've been through all of the great years too and now they sort of have to go through this rebuilding it's almost like conceding a season well it uh, really isn't and we don't look at it that way this looks bad tonight and, and it does concern us but on the other hand, we think we can win games. And I think uh, uh, as we evolve, it's a long season. Uh, if we can keep our young players' uh, heads up, I know these veteran players aren't going to get their heads down. If we can keep them up, we can be a better team as we go through the year. Jerry, as always, thanks for the time. Good luck. 
All right, Susie, thanks very much. And Jerry did make a point that I, I think is, is critical to this. When they had all their success, when he and Jimmy Johnson were together, there was no cap. They could go out and spend whatever they want. They made the great Herschel Walker trade. They made all these deals. They got first-round draft choices. And really, you're handicapped by the system now. You can't do it anymore. This is Buck Halter with a nice cutback still on his feet. It's a foot race. And George Teague has him at the 45. A game of 48 for Corral Buckholm. Well, that was a nice cut he makes back inside. They almost had him at the line of scrimmage, but then Buckholder just touched back, just that little step back to the inside. Here's where he's almost tackled, right there. Now he makes a cut back inside, a missed tackle, but he gets back inside. Pepper Zeller was the guy that missed him downfield. It's a nice run. Fourth round draft choice out of Nebraska, so you know he can run the football. I, uh, you know, talking to him though, it was funny about blocking and catching balls at Nebraska. He never had to do that. Draw to Martin, and the fullback stuffed as he got to the 45 yard line. From the Eagles' perspective, when a game gets out of hand like this, when the score is 40 to 6, one of the hardest things to do as a player is to keep your focus. And what Andy Reid preaches and drives to these guys at in practice, the tempo of their practice is always upbeat. The receivers run down the field, they jog back. It reminds me of a few years ago when I used to watch the San Francisco 49ers with Jerry Rice and Joe Montana, and after that, Steve Young. The efficiency with which they practice is carried right out onto the field, and they can keep their focus by doing that. Second and ten from McNabb. Buck calls it back in there. Loose ball. Turnover after turnover tonight, and the still no signal. Now Dallas has it. There's that fight we've talked about all night. Tough hit by Hambrick to shake it loose. We'll be back third quarter from Philadelphia in a moment. For almost 100 years, cattle. 120 to go third quarter from Philadelphia. The Eagles leading at 40 to 6. If you joined us late, it has been a collection of turnovers and eagle offense. That's Dallas to the 6 0 lead. Emmett, line of scrimmage, and no more. Wednesday night at 8, we will open the NHL season on ESPN. Mario Lemieux and the Penguins will host last year's Stanley Cup champion, Colorado Avalanche. Wednesday night hockey on ESPN. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Dave Campo trying to find some positives in this game. Second and ten. Wright has to scramble. Got a block downfield to reach the 43. Ball came loose, but late. One other thing, I had breakfast with Jerry Jones this morning, and he really, the reason why they want Quincy Carter to be their quarterback, they feel like there's a supporting cast around them. When Rocket comes back, you'll have some receivers. They've got a good offensive line in Emmett. But they need to find out if next year they have to go after a quarterback with that number one pick. They'll finally have one for the first time in three years, and it's very important that they are able to find out exactly what this kid can do. Because of the supporting cast, they'll get a good evaluation. Who bought breakfast? Jerry. Thank okay. you. Basically, this is going to be a year-long addition for Quincy Carter, the rookie out of Georgia. The Eagles defense has dominated the Cowboys through three quarters. Eagles on top of the Cowboys, 40 to six, and one of the focuses for the Philadelphia Eagles will be the team that they will now be tied for first place with in the NFC East. That's the Giants because they lost to them three times last year. Yeah, but I, I, I just have the feeling, looking at this team tonight, and I know Dallas is playing badly, Joe, but this Philadelphia Eagle football team is a very, very good football team. And so are the New York yes, Giants. So Jim today. Fossil's got his guys playing really tough. New Orleans is a very, very good football team as well. I think when people look at this division, the foregone conclusion has been, well, the Philadelphia Eagles are the best team in the NFC East, but yet they have been unable to beat the Giants the last nine times they played them, and Donovan McNabb hasn't beaten them yet. 
that is going to be a good football game. Hugh Douglas with a couple weeks to get a chance to chew on some Kerry Collins. <laughs> Buck Halter. Trying to turn it outside. He's gang tackled before he got to the 15. Let's take a look at our game track, and the Cowboys have ruined themselves. Five turnovers, and Donovan McNabb has certainly taken advantage of the short field. 162 yards, three touchdowns. Emmett, after a dreadful start, 58 yards on the ground as he continues to get ever closer to the legendary Walter Payton. For all the things you can say about Emmett, the only thing that really is in his mind is winning. Second and nine. And now McNabb is going to have to burn a timeout. Big smile on his face. You can smile all you want when you're up 40 to 6. ESPN Sunday Night Football is brought to you by Michelin because so much is riding on your tires. By the Olive Garden. When you're here, your family. And by Original Coors. Nothing. Beats an original. City of Love. Is that a really nice people here in Philadelphia? Well, when you have the love sculpture. I mean, I'm telling you, everybody says hello. You know, I remember we had the X Games here. You remember draft day? Draft day when Donovan McNabb was taken by the Eagles? Yes, he I certainly do. remembers it. <laughs> With the uh, second pick, the Philadelphia Eagles select Donovan McNabb, quarterback, Syracuse University. Eagle fans wanted Ricky Williams, and it took a lot of guts for Donovan McNabb to stand there and smile while they were booing him down. Boo stopped in a hurry, didn't they? He has brought such a great attitude to this football team, a great work ethic. That's the one thing that Andy Reid talked about with regard to his growth and getting better. Everybody talks about Peyton Manning and how committed he is to be the best quarterback he can be. Donovan McNabb brings that same energy and enthusiasm to the position. Well, the way Susie was telling us how hard he trains in the offseason and everything he does, the kid came out of Syracuse with a lot of talent and a lot of desire to be the best player in the NFL. He scratches off all the goals he's accomplished and then rewrites new ones. Landetta to kick. Swinton from the 41. Swinton across midfield, a return of 11 after a 41-yard kick. 12.44 to go from Philadelphia, where the Eagles are rolling over the Dallas Cowboys, 40-6. If you want to get into our most award-winning lineup of Chrysler vehicles ever, you've got to get into this. The Chrysler Model Year End Clearance. Now, for a limited time, get 0% financing and make no down payment and no monthly payments for 90 days on select Chrysler Sebrings. Hurry to the Chrysler Model Year End Clearance today. The 2001 models are going fast, so you should be even faster. See your Key State's Chrysler dealer, home of the official cars of the Philadelphia Eagles. What does it take to defy a corrupt empire? A rebel in disguise. A monk who stands for justice. And a woman with the courage of both. The Los Angeles Times calls Iron Monkey an outstanding adventure with breathless gravity-defying action that surpasses the Matrix. Iron Monkey, rated PG-13. In theaters Friday, October 12th. Here at the John Kennedy dealerships, we love what we do. We love selling Ford, Chevys, Lincolns, and Mercury's. And we especially love selling certified pre-owned cars. Choose from a wide selection of cars, trucks, and SUVs with extended warranties. At John Kennedy, we have pre-owned cars priced for all budgets. And all vehicles are checked for quality and safety. 
Stop in at one of our five locations and find out why over 8,000 satisfied customers buy from John Kennedy every year. John Kennedy Dealerships, where your satisfaction is all in a day's work. It's opening day on ESPN Wednesday Night Hockey. The Stanley Cup champion avalanche led by league MVP Joe Sackett. Take on Super Mario and the Penguins. Score by Lemieux! Colorado Pittsburgh, Wednesday at 8, only on ESPN. Dan Patrick and Stuart Scott standing by with Sports Center. Bond still chasing the mark. Our NFL Blitz, Jordan's Legacy, and Chris Berman along with the top 10 plays. Right takes over for the Dallas offense at the Philadelphia 49. Hambrick for a couple. Let's check in with Chris. Mike, a huge defining day for Dante Culpepper, the young quarterback of the Vikings. His team could have been 0-3 until he led him on a last few minutes, 96-yard drive, and this touchdown to beat Tampa Bay 20-16. He delivered when Brad Johnson could not for the box. Chris, an absolutely huge win for the Vikings. That one's incomplete, knocked away. Good defensive play by Al Harris. Susie Culver, you talked to Chris Carter earlier in the week. We had a long conversation, and most of it dealt with Chris's frustrations. Now, sometimes it takes a team coming apart at the seams to kind of get back on the same page. One of the biggest issues there is the coaching staff being selective in terms of who they reprimand for behavior that consistently hurts the team. Guys like Chris Carter are out there motivating other players. They're constantly hustling and blocking, and, and one of the main things comes down to one of the superstars of the NFL, Randy Moss, if you watch enough film, you see that he isn't doing his job on every play. And it comes down to how do you allow one player to do that? We saw plays that effectively lost the game for them. Well, Susie, what's interesting about that, some coaches will say, I've got one rule for everybody. Other coaches will say, well, this guy's special. I've got different rules for him. And you never know which is the right approach. I've always felt it should be one rule for everybody, but a well, lot of people don't agree with it. I go back to Jimmy Johnson when he cut a guy for napping in a meeting. And he said if it was Troy Aikman, he'd have just walked over and nudged him and said, Troy, could you wake up, please? So I, I just, you know, you have to hopefully find quality people and character people that are willing to work hard and set an example. North hunting to Brian Mitchell makes the fair catch. 11.49 to go in the ball game. The Eagles have dominated this one against the Dallas Cowboys. They lead it 40 to 6. You ready for a cold one? Yeah. It's cold, but it ain't Coors Light. Coors Light Tasty. You don't date much, do you? Zigbig Dorlu eats her Reese's. <laughs> There's no wrong way to eat her Reese's. It's Applebee's Fiesta Del Grill. Make your taste buds dance with tangy tequila lime chicken. Or for a limited time, the sizzling Southwest steak skillet. Only at Applebee's. You ready for a cold one? Yeah. It's cold. It's not Coors Light. Coors Light. Tasty. You can drop in anytime. Come on, you guys. Tell him I'm not discussing anything until he acknowledges human error is part of the game. And you tell him that not one game ever has been ruined by instant replay. Not one. 
Donovan McNabb will watch the rest of this one. His night is done after 14 out of 28, three touchdowns, 162 yards, leading his ball club to a victory, and his replacement is Corey Detmer. Out of Colorado, and he gives it off to Buckhalter. Detmer getting a chance to play a little bit. Donovan McNabb having an excellent evening. First touchdown to Chad Lewis, another one to Chad Lewis. Worked out of the pocket very effectively. Todd Pinkston with a terrific catch. And he managed to spread the ball around quite well. Wide receivers had six, tight end had four, running backs had four. He continues to do that. It's very difficult to game plan defensively against this defense because in the first three games, they've really featured three different people. Two wide receivers and the tight end in this one. Buck Halter again. Wrapped up by Dat Wynn. Let's go back to Susie. Well, one of the greatest things about Donovan, he has that perfect mix. He has fun, he does impersonations of his teammates, but when he steps into the huddle, he's serious. Well, no surprise how much fun he's having tonight. I looked at him behind the bench. He's all smiles, he's laughing. I said, you have a good time tonight? He goes, you bet. I had a lot of fun. Hey, why not? He's a very pleasant guy to be around, isn't he? Made the Pro Bowl last year in his first full year as a starter. Andy Reid let him sit about a half of his rookie year, allowing him to learn this offense. Well, in the first game of this year against St. Louis Rams, that they went into overtime. And really had a shot at beating the Rams. Yeah, he's, he walked into the huddle, and he cracked a joke with the guys just to relax everybody. He said, hey, come on. This game's ours. And, you know, you just got to love this guy. The thing about it is, and what Susie hit on, really, he, the guy is having fun. And that's what this It's a game. And one of the things that Andy Reid was curious about was that teams have had a chance to game plan now against Donovan McNabb. And he was curious to see how he would prepare for other teams through the course of the offseason. Came in, worked just as hard to get himself ready. Sean Landetta, who has had a brilliant career and still at the top of his game. It's a high floater out of Swinton trying to get to the outside. Turns the corner and out of bounds. Tomorrow night on Monday Night Football, Terrell Owens and the 49ers will face Curtis Martin and the Jets. That's 9 Eastern on ABC. The next Sunday night, we're off to the West Coast. Chris Wenke and the Panthers travel to Three Count Park in San Francisco to take on Jeff Garcia and the 49ers. That's at 8.30 Eastern on ESPN. Anthony Wright is out and Clint Sterner, normally the number three quarterback, is in the ballgame. Smith, of course, out of the ball game right now. We asked him about his season goals and what's most important to him this year. If I can ask for anything, if I could trade his title in, this, if I can, if I didn't get the rushing, beat Walter Payton, I would be happy with that. If we want to see with the guys. That we have. He really emphasized how much he loves these kids and would love them to feel the same thing that he did standing on the podium. There's the quick out, the completion to Cheverini for about a yard. Here's what else Emmett had to say. I want these guys to experience what I've experienced three times. And that in itself, it will, it will bring, bring such joy to my heart to see these guys stand in the Super Bowl and raise that trophy up. And I'm being a part of that. <laughs> it was funny about him sitting, he said, I'm sitting in the locker room. Is your room back? I didn't know anybody. <laughs> all by myself. He has moments where he flashes backs and reflects on you know, the guys that he's played with, the Michael Irvings, the Troy Aikman, the Daryl Johnson. Third and seven, Hambrick on the draw. 
Boy, they just ripped his helmet off. That's a 15-yarder. The other thing about Emmett, we had so much fun with him and with Dave Campo after Emmett came out and said he thought Anthony Wright should be the starter because it would give him the best chance to win now and not Quincy Carter. So everyone was giving Emmett grief, and we asked him if he'd met with Dave to give him his personnel input this week. And Dave says, well, normally that's a Friday meeting, you know, when <laughs> Emmett tells me who he wants to play. So they were all in good humor about it. But that's the competitive spirit of Emmett Smith. And everybody in the Cowboy organization recognizes that. I like what he says. A 50 pounds lighter Jerry Jones watching from the sidelines. But Emma said, I don't think anybody told Dave Campbell that I'm the new general manager. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes sitting next to Emmett is Joey Galloway, who continues to find little production in this offense. You look at you, you look at the experience, and it's really on the offensive line. Guys like Stepnowski, Larry Allen, Solomon Page in his third year. This offense is also missing Jackie Harris at the tight end position. Page Max gives them a first down, and Sterner back to throw pressure from behind. Got the throw, and Cheverini made the catch down to the 16-yard line. These are the only two guys left from the three Super Bowl titles. 14 combined Pro Bowls, and they can both still play, Smith and Woods in the safety. And they both still love to play as well. Not just the ability, but the heart to do it. And and Dequay Kalu is the injured player. Here are the numbers on uh, Woodson. He's had a brilliant career. Kalu is number 94 coming across. And we'll check on Kalu as he grabs that left ankle. First, let's go to Chris Berman. Chris. All right, Michael, thank you. Huge upset in Foxborough where the Colts always struggle, but you figure they wouldn't this time with Tom Brady starting for Drew Bledsoe. But Peyton Manning picked off three times, twice for touchdowns by the Patriots. Ty Law, they fought the law, and the law won. The Patriots humble the Colts 44-13. You know, we sit around while we're getting ready for our game, and of course our game's at night, and we get to see some of the games during the afternoon. They kept putting that score up, and I kept saying, well, they've got the score wrong. It's reversed. Uh, Bill Belichick's done a terrific oh. job. How Hats about off to the Patriots. How about Antoine Smith? Showing up for the New England Patriots. Resurrected his career. They've sorry. They've been. They have needed a running game for so long to take some pressure off of Drew Bledsoe. And we hope that he is recovering and will get back in the action real quick. Straight up the middle of Robert Thomas out of Henderson State. Robert Thomas has the biggest helmet on the Cowboys. Bigger than Flozell Adam, who is as Adams is 6'7", 335 pounds. That's it. Eight and three eighths helmet. Eight and three eighths. What size did you wear? I wore a six and three quarter helmet. Ooh. People accused me of having a big head. See tell how wrong was, they were? Tell me was the most valuable player in the Super Bowl, and then his helmet looked a <laughs> nine and a half. And it stayed that way. A <laughs> six and three quarters was my helmet. That little tiny one. Paul, did they have sizes on those leather ones that you had? <laughs> Actually, you know, or was it, it one size fits all? No, it. They, the nice part about those helmets is leather guys that we wore when I, you know, when Did you were, polish those? No, 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 no. Seriously. I mean, I get when, my when, shoes when done. When you're done playing, they give it to you. You make a wallet out of it. <laughs> They're really nice. <laughs> you can fold them up, put them in your back pocket. <laughs> but I did play all through high school, I guess. Yeah, I did without a fa Well, it's obvious. I had a plastic <laughs> face. I had, I, I, had no, I had none. Is it? Can did you tell? Really? <laughs> <laughs> is it hard to tell? <laughs> <laughs> and nine for the Cowboys. Michael Wiley is into the running back spot. As the coaching staff goes to a lot of its second and third line personnel, Wiley on the screen lost his footing as he got inside the 10. There's a, another flag back here. Hugh Douglas and Flozell Adams are going at it. That's on Hugh Douglas. For roughing the quarterback. Personal foul. Roughing the passer. Number 53 defense. Penalized half the distance to the goal. And a first down. 
Oh, oh, he got pushed into it. Well, yeah, but he just, and what, what they saw him do is just lower his shoulder and unload in the back of the quarterback. Well, Flozell Adams ought to get, you know, the roughing the call. He ought to get that five time. of those it 10 yards. Sure should. It ought to just be a 10-yard penalty. Flozell just launched Hugh Douglas into his quarterback. Well, again, I, you know, I don't know why Hugh Douglas is in the game anyway. Because he wants to get a sack. Only has one this year so far. Hambrick, room to run outside, flags are down, and Hambrick scores. We'll check the penalty. If it stands, it would be the first Cowboy touchdown of the night. Movement before the snap, and that will cost him the score. We saw Hugh Douglas rough the quarterback, but this is Hugh Douglas, what he has done tonight on L. Adams. But look at the speed. That was the, the cause of the fumble with Anthony Wright. Here's Hugh Douglas chasing, and he actually overruns Emmett, Emmett Smith. And then here's Hugh Douglas again. Just put an arm on the quarterback and let him know he's there. He's got great feet. Great feet. Made the Pro Bowl a year ago. Remember, he had such outstanding success with the Jets. Then they went to the 3-4, and he was not a defensive end who could play in the 3-4. Oh, he's, he's a smaller 6'2", 280-pounder, 15 sacks last year. Hambrick on the toss. Blockers in front, but not anymore. Hambrick still in his feet. Fights inside the five. You saw N.D. Kalu hurt earlier. Susie, what do you have? re-aggravated a high ankle sprain that had caused him to miss the first two games and they're not really sure of his status just yet my guess is with the amount of time left he's he's trying to walk it off right now we don't know if we'll see him again or not tonight thanks Susie he is a very quick defensive end good pass rush let me ask you one quick you know talk about me not wearing a helmet you know every time the linebackers come in you, you two guys start interviewing you always say hey look at him that's what you're going to eventually I look know. like you know we'll just try to I give mean, these guys a chance to have, look into the future <laughs> that's all you know give a kid a chance to you know see what it so might that's be a nice thing you're doing that's right? why they had the extra bars that's right, right. looking out for your attention <laughs> sterner in the flat complete pass diving for the end zone thomas he's got it robert thomas who three years ago was working at an engine factory during the day and was a security guard at night. Go for two. <laughs> hey, they're going to go for two. Nice throw by Sterner. And good effort by Thomas. What did I tell you? Go for two. Now they can get within. Yeah, it's, it's that sheet. It says when you're down by 34, get within 26. Should move it on in. Hambrick is the tailback. Sterner to throw for it and throws to Hambrick a little behind him. So they don't get the two point conversion, but they get their first touchdown of the night. And it's 40 to 12 here in Philadelphia. Winner for Jerry Hill. One price buying at one location. Now get 0% financing on every new Ford in stock. 0%. New Focus ZX3s with premium group, air conditioning, and more. Now just $198 a month, and you own it. 30 Focuses in stock. Save as much as $7,000 on a new Windstar. Or finance your new Windstar at 0% for 60 months. 60 in stock. One price buying at one location. Winner for Jerry Hill on Haddonfield Road. Just off exit 32 of I-295, Cherry Hill. Now you can help manage your diabetes anytime, anywhere. This is Glucerna, an ideal food for people with diabetes. Grab a delicious bar as a snack or have a shake as an occasional meal. Glucerna has the right balance of carbohydrates, fat, and protein. And it's clinically proven to help manage glucose levels. Glucerna is specially formulated to free your mind for other things. Try Glucerna. It's time for a taste of freedom. We'll be there. Later on Sports Center, Barry Bonds and Ricky Henderson both chasing history in the same game. The NFL Blitz tackles Sunday's key games, and how will Michael Jordan's comeback affect his legacy? 
Join me, Stuart Scott, and Dan Patrick for Sports Center after the game. After our game at Sports Center, Dan Patrick, Stuart Scott will bring you up to date on Bonds chasing Mark McGuire's record, the NFL Blitz, and Jordan's legacy. I happen to run into Larry uh, Brown, the coach of the 76ers, at uh, the Eagle practice on Thursday. We were talking about this year coming. He said, it's great that Michael's coming back and playing for the Wizards. And he says, as a matter of fact, he thinks because of Michael's presence, he's got some young guys around him. He said, that team will be in the playoffs next year. That's how much of an impact he thinks that Michael Jordan will have. You want to see an impact? Watch this when this onside kick comes. Caught by the Eagles. Good job by Cecil Martin just hanging on. 4.43 to go in the game. It's 40 to 12. Under norm normal circumstances, Dat Win would have been born in Vietnam and lived out his life there. But when Saigon fell to the North Vietnamese, his parents had to flee with the clothes on their back and $10. His mother was four months pregnant, and Dat, her sixth child, would be born in a refugee camp in Arkansas. The family eventually settled on the Texas Gulf Coast. They were working on shrimp boats and in restaurants 14 hours a day. At that time, discrimination against Vietnamese was common. Dad said he felt it as a teenager, but he took his father's advice. Smile and go about your business. That smile, which has no trace of bitterness, comes much easier now after a brilliant career at Texas A&M and winning the Cowboys job at middle linebacker. They were lucky to escape Vietnam. We are lucky to have them in America. That is a special young man right there. Yeah, he is. And in this, in this particular philosophy of defense that the Cowboys want to try and implement this year, he's going to be required to cover a lot of guys down the middle. He'll be the hanger, much like we see out of the way the Tampa Bay Buccaneers play with their middle line. He's listed at 243. He said he lost uh, some weight. Recently, he's down to 239. That is very light for a middle linebacker, even though Dallas has traditionally gone with the smaller guys who can run. But, the, yeah, but their linebackers are very, very, very quick. Hammer and, and Datwin and, and Dexter Coakley, they are quick linebackers. And, you know, this is not really a big team on no. defense. That's why, that's why Mike... Well, they're not a big team on offense. Mike Zimmer either. took the time in the offseason to go around and take a look at different schemes, went and talked to Marvin Lewis in Baltimore. By the way, congratulations to Baltimore. They went into Denver today and pulled out a, a hard-fought victory and just visited with a lot of different coaches and felt that the scheme that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers run with the cover two style of defense, with his young corners, it would be good, and a lot of movement of their guys up front. The thing is, is if you move your defensive linemen and your linebackers and try and stun them, you're going to wind up creating some negative plays, but you're also going to wind up creating some very large holes for guys to run through. Well, I don't know if this is just the length of the game or I've sort of been stunned by this whole thing, but didn't you think Dallas's defense played rather well tonight? I, I, they continue to be put in a terrible hole by the offense and special teams. Well, their special teams really is what sunk them. But I think the defense held up very well. Once they made the adjustment to try and go after Donovan McNabb, just rushing four and trying to contain him, wasn't going to get it done. Too many places for him to throw the football. The Eagles will kick it away with two and a half minutes left. Landetta trying to pooch this one. Beautiful kick. Hangs it high. And the Eagles will down it inside the five. Excellent kick by Landetta. Log on to NFL.com for an in-depth analysis from current and former players and coaches. Plus, you'll get all the scores and stories from the day. NFL.com. And for the deepest coverage anywhere, log on to ESPN.com. The keyword NFL for all the scores, analysis, and breaking news from today's action. Andy, Andy Reid really building a program he here, He really Joe. is. They're a young team, and they've got Joe Banner, their capologist, has done a terrific job. They've taken some chances to sign some guys for a long time. This is a team that's going to be around and grow together. They're a close-knit fun, hard-working group of guys, and I think that's sort of indicative of their coach. He was the quarterback coach for Mike Holmgren in Green Bay, beat Mike Holmgren in Seattle a week ago, said he knew it wasn't uh, your normal ball game. Sterner throwing out of the end zone and throws it out of bounds. And for the success that Andy Reid had a year ago, he was named uh, Coach of the Year in a couple of different polls by publications. 
And you, you think of what he did with a, a young guy like Donovan McNabb and the draft picks that are under him. They had 23. There's 17 still with the Eagles. Ten of them have started. I mean, that's that's really building your team through the draft, and that young man has been the linchpin for him. And Donovan wanted to send his best to his uh, buddies up at Syracuse. Hope they get that turned around. Here's Hambrick, breaking one. William Hampton, the only one with a chance to catch him. Hampton couldn't bring him down, slowed him down. And now Hambrick will be tackled at the 15-yard line. A gain of 80 yards. But the <laughs> he just stepped on him. He stepped on him after he tried to bring him down. Oh. Hambrick breaks an 80-yarder. We have reached a two-minute warning at 1.58 back after this. Thank you, Dan. We'll look forward to that. A minute 58 to go here. 40 to 12. Eagles over the Cowboys. It was 6-0 Dallas early. And then the floodgates open. The Eagles have been riding the crest ever since. Hambrick and Wiley are the running backs. Behind Clint Sterner. Sterner floats this one toward the end zone. Caught Huggins touchdown. There is a flag down on the play. Holding against Dallas. Mike, when when Quincy Carter comes back, probably next week. 79 offense. 10 yard penalty. Repeat first down. Sharon Dorsey, the uh, rookie tackle. He's going to be given an opportunity to be able to play a different style of offense than he did in the first game against Tampa Bay. Jack Riley, the offensive coordinator, was bound and determined not to put the pressure of winning the game on this young man's shoulders. But even through Emmett's prodding a little bit, he said, hey, look, if the guy's going to play, let him have the full complement. Give Joey Galloway and Rocket a chance to contribute. So Jack said that when they play next week's game, and Quincy's in there, they're going to give him every opportunity to be able to have every weapon available to him and open up the game and learn that way. Well, isn't, isn't that the point? Let's see what uh, Quincy had to say about it. And we asked Emmett what he thought about Quincy as the new starting quarterback. I believe that he can play football and he can throw the football and he's a good, solid quarterback. Uh, he has to learn how to become an NFL quarterback. He has to learn how to read defenses and, and make quick decisions and get the ball to the, in the right people's hands at the right time. And really the only way he's going to learn that, one, sit on the bench like other young quarterbacks have done and watch somebody else do McNair it or go out and do it himself. Or, or Donovan McNabb. Exactly. Those two, or do it himself. There's a couple different ways to approach it. One of the things about Quincy is when he first got to the practice in a mini camp, he walked up to Emmett and he went, wow. Well, I'm, I can't believe I'm handing the ball to Emmett Smith. And Emmett said, you better get over it, son, because I'm here and this is real and you can help us win. So, you know, put the little dream world behind you. You're in the big world now. Clock stopped with 101. You know, we're all rooting for Emmett. Oh, absolutely. And, and part of Walter Payton was, was such a great human being as well as a great part of professional football and Emmett is that same type of a person he means so much to the game and has meant so much to this franchise he's great fun to be around in fact a few years ago they said he was washed up but the fact his offensive line struggled was the problem it wasn't him Sterner in the flat and incomplete to Robert Thomas we have learned to appreciate groups of people that we may have taken for granted before. Uh, there is Dawkins giving a game ball to uh, one of the Philadelphia firemen in attendance here. We'll never see these guys the same way again, and that's good. Because they have always been there for everybody. Our hats are off to you, fellas. What an emotional day in New York. Oh. Wow, the Giants. Congratulations to the Giants after going through that emotion. You didn't know which way it was going to go. Third and six for Sterner. Now he dumps it off to Wiley, and Wiley gets the touchdown. No flags on this one. Clint Sterner 
And Anthony Wright now have five touchdown passes between the two of them in the first three games for the Dallas Cowboys. And they're going to go for two again. Sterner was such a, a great quarterback in college in Arkansas. He's had a chance to hone his skills a little bit playing in NFL Europe. He does a nice job stepping up in the pocket, looking upfield, dumps it off. Wiley. Hey, that's nice poison, the young man. I mean, he just, you know, he could have run with the ball, but he hesitated. So he saw Wiley got a touchdown. Sterner again goes for the corner, but Wiley can't get there. So they fail on the two-point conversion. But a couple of courtesy touchdowns makes at least look the scoreboard uh, makes it look a little better for the Dallas Cowboys. Join ESPN Tuesday night, 7 Eastern. We say goodbye to Mile High, the last football game played at Mile High Stadium in Denver. The show will include some great flag football plays from Joe Montana and John Elway. Well, some great wireless sound for you Tuesday night at 7 Eastern on ESPN. Everybody has nothing but good things to say about the new mile high. And we'll get a chance to see it a little bit later yes, on will. this year. Get out there and see the Denver Broncos again. Isn't this league turning into a group of haves and have-nots? Well, the have-nots from you know, Cleveland and Cincinnati, for example, New England, everybody thought would be downtrodden. They came up big today against what looked like an unstoppable Indianapolis right. offense. Cincinnati played it real tough against San Diego. San Diego coming back. you got to feel great for Norv Turner because he's a heck of a football coach that got cut a raw deal and got blamed for a lot of things that went on. And I think what you see in the Washington Redskins now is some of the struggles that they're having makes you appreciate just how good a football coach Norv was in handling that offense. And Marty will have to go find his kind of players to get the job done there. But Cleveland coming up big again. Cowboys go for the onside kick. Ball is still loose and goes out of bounds. And Paul, Marty Schottenheimer, your friend for... Years and years and years is in a, a terribly difficult situation there. Something not of his own making. I'm afraid to call him. <laughs> I don't, you know, I've known Marty. We played together back in 1965. <laughs> somewhere around there. Yeah, somewhere back in there. And we were great, great friends that still are to this day. There is no foul on the play. The ball touched the receiving team player before going out of bounds. Belongs to the receiving team at the spot where we're out of bounds. First down. First down, they'll take a knee, one play, and it's over with. But Marty, and I, I really, I'm, there's no reason to, to call him. I talked to him before the season. He was very upbeat about his football team. He thought, you know, you know, there's a, th a lot of things to work out. But well, we'll see him a couple times this year. Oh, I know we're going to see a couple we've times. Him, but we got him against New Orleans in the last, well, what could have been the last game of the season, may or may not be, depending upon how the league decides on the playoff picture. and where the Super Bowl will be played and how it will be played. But right now, the Washington Redskins are not a very good football team. And speaking of the Redskins, by the way, we asked the Cowboys if they would have any interest in Jeff George, and the answer was a complete no. I'm curious to see if anyone will sign Jeff. Like I said, Jeff, Jeff has been, Jeff, Jeff George has been Jeff George since the day he set foot in the National Football League. He has not been a different type of a football player. He doesn't get emotional. He has very few facial expressions. He throws the ball very hard, and I think a lot of people had hoped that he could, you know, lead the football team. Matter of fact, in Minnesota, he did an excellent job a few years ago. Well, Jeff George in that offense was a square peg in a round hole. But not Donovan McNabb in this Eagle offense. Oh, no. Excellent night for the Eagles. They win it big, and they will share first place with the New York Giants in the NFC East. Final score, 40-18 to 18, Philadelphia. Sports Center is next for our entire ESPN crew. This is Mike Patrick. Good night from Philadelphia. This has been a presentation of ESPN.